Leroy Ford was one of the baddest men. Yeah, they call me the kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> Toby the Leroy, ready to deploy. Had to hit her with a little journalism, but that was a decoy. Better ask about me, boy. Okay, Leroy and Tobin, host of the showman. Still silly sauce with the show in. Till then, it's half moon open. Sometimes gold yeah. takes like a snowman. No proof, I'm a lie about a molding. No proof. Like I always wanted him, I never hated him, I never traded him, and if I did, I never ever tried again. What? What is in store? Like under the seat of the driver's side floor. It's cozy to galore. So many more from six in the Mars. Never more. Man, man of a uh -huh. the damage is done. Damage. Silly sauce, on unlimited funds. Join us on Twitch for unlimited fun. J Fig and Marcos, you waited or what? Toby Tobin, you <laughs> two shit who Tobin is. Nah, thanks, Low Dog. Love you, man. It's good to have you back. One and oh, since Kyle Lowry returned to the starting lineup. You got some heat action tonight? Uh, we do have heat action tonight. And let me tell you, old Toe's going to be watching out for body language. Well, See what's going on with that Luca. I'm excited. Is your mic on? Is his mic on? I think so. Yeah. No, I don't hear you, dude. Uh, it's like in the right program. And it's on. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't hear you. I hear you. There nah, we go. There you go. There program was wrong? Was, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't me. No, no, no. Right. Well, I mean, it really wasn't me. I don't know who took it off program one. That's a weird thing. Solana. <laughs> Not to name names. Right. So, I'm excited. First of all. I picked up breakfast on the way in. I see that. Thank you so much. And saved myself about a 20 spot. Mm. Oh, dude. I could <laughs> ran all day about this. But real quick. You're on to the, uh, the, the Uber Ponzi scheme? I was just curious. What is the different price of going to the restaurant versus having Uber delivered? Let's run through some charges, shall we? Oh, jeez. I got a simple Texas toast, egg, sausage. Sounds glorious, doesn't it? Sure does. Delicious. All right. There, it costs $6.45. Wow. Very reasonable. Yes. I'm like, okay. Okay. I, the JPEG. I was excited. <laughs> She's going to hate that you said that. Right. I look on Uber Eats. $8.45. Wow. Now, here's what I start thinking as I'm waiting for my glorious food. Two dollars for every item. Some of it's even more. If you get a platter, they jack it up like four dollars. Right? Because the one thing I'll say about food at any breakfast place that um that is run by Latinos is really cheap. Mm -hmm. You can you can you can you can go ahead and get your eat on. So I ain't even you know, so I'm thinking they do this to thousands of restaurants around the country, then charge a delivery fee, then you give a tip. So basically, the extra that I normally pay to have Hoagie Hut delivered here is the same price that I paid for us to eat this morning. I was like. So I'm you were floored. I was floored. So it's so, kind of adorable that you're just onto this, though. Like it, you've been doing Uber Eats for a long time now. You're just onto yeah. the scheme. Yeah. Like, well, you know, you just when you find out, you know, it really is kind of like when you find out you, you, you know, your relationship is great, and then you realize that your girl is cheating or your your man is cheating on you. Yes, but right? it would be like, well, not you know, it'd be kind of like being having your heart broken, but you didn't realize the whole time your girlfriend was a hooker. Who? <laughs> like, that's right. that's you, like, like I know you, Uber Eats is screwing me. I know that that's the case. It's just I've known that the entire time. It's just, right. it's literally like, what am I paying for convenience right here for correct. something that doesn't deliver? Correct, correct, correct. All right. So you remember, like old school delivery, some places just used to deliver. You tip right. their guy, right? You tip their but guy. It, it's become now. It's getting even. How about um. What's the pizza joint? Domino's will pay you to come get your own stuff. I like that. <laughs> like, no, like what? Domino's is like still. What are we doing? 
and Domino's is still by far the fastest delivery known to man. I don't know how make they, yes. how they make those pizzas that fast. I'm a little uncomfortable with how fast they make the pizzas. Really? <laughs> you know, it's true. Whenever I order, they get here in like 10 minutes. It's ridiculous. Opinion. Like, the, the first of all, there's... The, the Domino's is always in a secret location. Like, it's always in, like... Well, because it's a small t- place. It's always a very small place. Right. They tried to... Remember, they tried to, like, uh, fix them up a little bit in the last couple of years. But what happened is a lot of them closed. Yeah. And now they're just, like, basically, like, they are, like, little kiosks to go either pick up the pizza or right. they're getting out. Now, how you guys feel about... I'm not a big fan hmm? of ready pizza. Hot and ready? Right, I love like Little Caesars. That by CC that right there. I'm not a fan of looking at a pizza and just getting a piece off of that. Even in New York, I would rather order a whole fresh pizza than have them just give me a slice of a pizza sitting under a hot plate. I don't know. It's just me. I don't, like. I know it's crazy. Does it does it give like gas station vibes? Is that why? Like gas station food. I don't know. I got to tell you, um, there's two places that have changed my mind a little bit about gas station food. Okay. Now there's a, there's a couple of cross bone and skulls when I go in the, in the store that they're right at that little section. Makes and, you nervous. Yeah. And I ain't going to mention no names, but Should. it's a number and two uh-huh. numbers and you it get a free ice. It used to be the nickname of Goran Dragic and Dion Waiters. Yep. When, when they were yeah. the backcourt in the right. 30 and 11 run. And, and, and no matter how much I do a little drive-by, buy it, I could be starving and on my deathbed and require food. That ain't happening. Isn't it great that that season's always just referred to by half a season? Nobody ever calls it the 41 and 41 season. We always just refer to that season as the 30 and 11. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever talks about that. Yeah. Eh, they were almost on their way to tanking. <laughs> we only refer to that season as the turnaround. The turnaround. The culture don't tank, bro. It right. don't tank. But but yeah. By the way, by the way. Very important tonight. Get some headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. I'm going to break here in just a couple minutes because Jason Jackson is going to join yeah, us from Dallas. Yeah, I got to tell you. And Mavericks tonight, 8 o'clock. You can hear Jax on the call right here on your home for Miami Heat basketball, 560 WQAM. Um, I, I, I aired yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday, what happened? We had a conversation about the defensive coordinator, and I knew that the Cleveland, was going. the Cleveland defense coordinator got fired, and I got it's it screwed up in my head. Nope. Then I got home later and found out the Dolphins defense coordinator. Got yes, I mean we were going to get to that. I didn't want to go because we got to talk to Jack. Whatever. Okay. Point is, the real correction I wanted to make, not the fact that you knew Josh Boyer was going to get fired the whole time and that you kept it from us. Um. <laughs> It's that I aired in missing uh, one of the key Slovenians in the Miami Heat yeah. Slovenian <laughs> pipeline. Yeah. And that, of course, is the great Bena Udri. Yeah. So I forgot one. Uh, more Slovenians to bring Luca into the fold here. Even though Bena Udri mm. was on a bunch of teams and only was on the Heat for a little bit. First of all, you would have to find him. I don't know where he is. Exactly. Where is Bena Udri? He can't count that. Oh, it counts, dude. No. Bano loved his time down here. He he, uh, he works for New Orleans. He does? Really? Player development. Get out of here. I'm reading that right now. Really? Oh, you know what that means. Mm. They have the pipeline. No. <laughs> Wait. They got somebody on staff. Nah. They got the pipeline. We'll take a quick break. Jason Jackson, radio voice of the Miami Heat, Bally Sports Son, pre, post, does it all. We talk to the Jack Show coming up next.
for you on 560 WQAM. It's a Vice Shirt Friday. Yep. We're having some fun you today. You know what it is with Jax, right? That's got Friday, dude. Yeah. We all know that. I wonder if he does it during the games, though. I don't know. Let's ask him, Leroy. You know what? We have the privilege of having the man and being able to go right to the source. We'll do some real journalism here. Let's go to the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop over 1,500 toys indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. He is Jason Jackson. He is the voice of your Miami Heat right here on your flagship, 560 WQM. You, of course, can also catch the coverage uh, tonight as Heat and Mavericks get going. Bally Sports Sun, 7.30 is when their coverage gets going from the home of the Heat's first championship, American Airlines Center. Jax, how are you doing this morning? Is everything going good? Uh, how could it be bad? I'm here with you all. Whoa, first thing in the you morning. You ain't witness protection, Jax. Yeah. What are we doing? Why, why is it got to be all that? <laughs> It's, it's, it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> That's my skin tone. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only Jax. I stayed oh. in the oven longer than most. Uh, what did you want to ask, Leroy? You wanted to ask what was still going on on Fridays? Are you still doing Ask Out Fridays? Because you in you the still different watch television. Do you? I mean, like you act like. Because I went to radio, there's no visuals or something. But no, I mean, yes. that's why I'm I just. Asked. I did not. I did not pack one. I will be honest. Hmm. Right, but we don't. We don't get to see you like we normally do. So I'm just wondering. A half hour if he still does it for a half hour. About an hour after for an hour, you got to commit to the whole television viewing experience. All right, Jax. I apologize. Leroy. That's on me. My bad. My, it's on me, Jay. No, I will be honest. I will be honest. Shame. On the road, it's rare. Because on the okay. road, I'm only on for like maybe five minutes. And Bro, okay. so I got you. The, right. the, the ascot on the road, uh, we're not going to sit here and get my neck all hot for three hours, <laughs> you know, for two and a half minutes of television. And, I got and, you. And, and and listen, carrying the, the load, and Tobin knows, when you're carrying the load of the Miami Heat audio experience, you got to have all your throat available. That's true. <laughs> how, like, how, last night, talk, can... No, I was saying, Jack, let's talk about like how much have you enjoyed? This is your second oh. year. You're halfway through the second year. Like, how much have you enjoyed yeah. the new, the new responsibility of being the the radio voice? Like, have you have you dug it? Like, do you enjoy it more the second year than the first year? How much is how much have you liked getting into this? What I love is how many people like to jump in my Twitter feed and tell me how to do it. That's my favorite part. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, no. You know, that's my favorite part. <laughs> and, and I have a unique style. I don't, I, it, it, there's so many things that I wanted to be when Michael retired and the opportunity was presented to me because I've spent my entire life loving and listening to play by play guys. And you know what you want it to sound like. And then you do it and you realize, Holy mm. hell, this game's really fast. <laughs> so you gotta prune all that R and B right. singer FM DJ stuff out of your throat. Like that's gotta go. Like right. it's literally watching what was that? What's the film where they have to lighten the load of something and they just keep throwing stuff out and they gotta take stuff off and we gotta go faster. We gotta go fast. <laughs> they're just taking all the stuff. I can't remember the flick off the top of my head. It'll come to me like 10 minutes from now. This is the joy of being 50 now, B. Is that I feel everything like, is that like Anaconda where they're running from the snake? No, no, they were just it's gotta be faster, <laughs> it's gotta be lighter. No, Anaconda, oh, oh, good lord. Anywho, <laughs> <laughs> that that's I like Jaws was too obvious. Uh, I've, I've mm -hmm. absolutely loved it. And, and it's it listen, my first 17 years were awesome, but what I didn't right. realize being a, a, a host and reporter, which I had been my entire career up until mm -hmm. last season is that with play-by-play, -play, uh, there's not a second of the game you're not locked into and engage with. So you are you got the traffic. We do it a little bit different, as as, as B knows. You know, we, we do a multiple-voice ensemble-type dynamic. Yep. And so 
not only am I traffic copping, calling the game, doing promos, doing sales items, uh, making sure we get to break in a relative, uh, relatively decent amount of time, pulling in an analyst on home games. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out how I want to say well, the secret sauce to Struce Juice. Well, Jax, one of the things that people don't understand is you did the same thing with your radio show. Mm, that you included mm-hmm. others because that's how I started doing it. I started yes, doing Fridays and then Mondays. And so, uh, yeah, just hearing you include other people and other opinions is not nothing right. new to you. My man. And people don't, people, yeah, man. You got you to gotta be deep in the memory stuff. banks for all that, right? Yes, yes, mm. yes. For yes. the Friday foursome. Come on now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> do you uh do you find an extra level of tension no matter when it is going into Dallas? Do you get side eyes and oh. is everybody just grumpy because the heat walk in there? Cause Man. you know, no love loss. I even said I listen, the I even said in New Orleans when I'm teasing the the game coming up next. <laughs> we're we're going to Dallas where we'll let them all know about 06 and we never talk about eleven. <laughs> That's it. I mean, That's so it. I have a ring. So I have a ring protocol, and mm-hmm. each city in which we battle in one championship rings: uh, Oklahoma City, Dallas, and uh, of course San Antonio. I wear those championship rings to those games, both in the arena and and on the road. And so I come in with a really kind of a a not so humble flex. Uh, oh, but both San Antonio and Dallas can show me theirs. So that's it's true. true. Yeah. It's a different that thing. You got to come in a little humble. I did go by the statue, the Dirk statue last oh. night. We we've been we've been we on it's we alarming. on this D Way D Way need to have his statue. Yeah, well, it's that Dr. part Jackson. of it. You, I, I'm gonna leave that for you all. You understand? I have work yeah. to do. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> we okay? understand. But what I will say is that the Dirk one is frightening. Like it, it I didn't. It I'm, I'm gonna ass. probably be off on the proportions, and you guys look it up. It looks like it's 30 feet tall. <laughs> All right. And then the angle of his fadeaway is not humanly possible. And I don't remember him being parallel to the floor <laughs> on release. I mean, he, he, some, listen, it was a some great shot. Some artistic liberties with him. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I think he lives in it. <laughs> <laughs> he just, that, that it's on. remarkable. Listen, kudos to, to Cuban. And them. They, they've, they, they've done well with their greatest player in franchise history. Tonight, uh, this team does feel like it's wrong. It was nice to get a blowout, first of all. That was uh, a oh. stress-free win. But how do you feel like it, 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 it's coming together, Jax? I really do feel like the team is playing a lot better. Nice to have everybody healthy. But, like, you you, you know, on the road, you are there in the locker room. Does, does the vibe mm-hmm. seem more relaxed? Do they feel, like, more confident, more comfortable? What are you get, gauging from just the temperature of the team? Yeah, you're, you're in the locker room a lot, uh, B. It, it, it's... It's solid. It, it, it stayed that way. It's been that way through these near 50 games. Uh, that's probably the astonishing part. That was the 15th time the intended lineup played together. And we're almost at game 50. 15. Right. right. Uh, with, if that's how it's going to look, and, and listen, they're, they're missing two, They speaking of the Pelicans, no Ingram, no Williams. Feel free to bring them both on Sunday at 3.30. I want it all. Uh, right. But that's how you deal with a team. That's down two of their best players. It's right. got to be, you know, it's 20, it's 26, oh, it's 15. No, it's not, it's 20. Like, that's that's exactly the realm you want to be in. Um, when they are using their defense the way that they used it, was it almost 20 turnovers for, for 24 points, and then everything else comes from there, you're in trouble. That's And they know that as a team. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just that's not always how it works. That Atlanta game, I want to put a gold star on Atlanta game because I think that's a nice midseason reminder of what are you playing around in these games for? Right. What right. are you getting down 26 for? You know you can come back, but once you use all that energy to come back, how do you get over the hump and stay over the hump? Mm-hmm. You play like that. Come out, set the tone, cause havoc, make the other team go, oh, wait, we're at work. we got to get to work <laughs> right now. And yeah. just make that the way that you go about it as long as the – the pixie dust of health is sprinkled yeah. on this team. I love, I love the the top nine, like the, from you know that first five, and then those, those next four, and then you know whatever whatever reserves you need after that. I, I like that group. I, I want that group now 
and 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 pushing all the way to the uh, second season. You don't think um, that maybe a, a, another big would help? Or um, I heard they've been kicking around a couple of guys, and there's been some. You mean like a seven that, footer that, that has yes. a nice jump shot and re- offensive rebounds, like somebody like that? <laughs> there's no tree that for number seventy seven that might be coming back <laughs> in a few weeks. You mean that guy? Oh, is he coming? Is he is, like? Uh, the thing well, about I mean, injuries with the Heat the is we have no it was, idea. It was three months, right? Mm-hmm. And next right. month is the third month. He's going to need, and we're talking about Omer Yurt 7, everybody. Yeah. Or, He's going to yeah. need a month seven, to get seven, back into it. Yurt 7, let's go. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you something. Get Silk Sonic on right now. Tell your boy to put Silk Sonic on. 777, seven, seven. let's go. That's the new <laughs> song you all need to play every 15 minutes of Heat. Because I can't wait. I mean, the thing about year seven, and so let's go through his timeline. Let's not make it pressure filled. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. the last couple of years, the addition the Heat needed was right in the house, healing. And I don't think right. people should forget about the fact that from the summer work, I know in summer league, he didn't play as much as he did last year. Um, but year seven into camp, my gut, and we didn't get to know because his left ankle didn't didn't work. My gut is that cat was going to be in the first five. Really, really. Okay, that's they my did gut. do that the first the first preseason game. They, that's what they rolled out, and I, I mean, was I was kind of surprised by it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he's earned it, right? He did the work. Um, he is. He worked on his perimeter game, so he can kind of get out of Bam's way. And now, now that this little bottom of the circle jumper is a layup, I told Bam the other day, I don't even want to see layups from you because that is a layup. You dunk right. and you shoot that little thing, whatever we're gonna right. call it. You guys can put a name on that thing yet? You put a name on that little jumper? I, I don't know. It's just inside the foul line. Everybody knows where it is, and he yeah. always seems open. Like, I, I, I don't I haven't figured out why. Hey, man, I'm, this I'm, is I might call it eyeball because that's when you shoot me eyeball out with that thing. Like, eyeball. That's it. He's, but yeah, uh, he's I also, think, Leroy, that while we all get, you know, uh, into our fantasy world of what possibly could occur, um, mm-hmm. I would love to see what happens middle February, early March, when you have <laughs> the big fella out of Georgetown. If it's anything, in. if it's anything like the patience they had with Vic and what they're getting out of Vic, mm. oh my goodness. Mm. Dude, that means the heat knows something we don't because they ain't saying yeah. nothing. But uh Vic it has just be been... interesting to see how you work him in when you get him back. Right. Uh, because you know the the listen. West Brown and the medical staff, training staff, they're they're gonna be methodical, right? They're mm-hmm. they're gonna move slower yes. than we than our than our appetite, which is good for the player, as we've noticed. But th- this then, is the uh, only organization, Jax, that I've seen do that. I've seen so many players in so many other sports be rushed back and then when they can't play, just get dumped. And the fact that they had so much patience with Vic, um, and they do it with a lot of guys with their injuries, uh, kudos yeah. to them, man. They're very patient with that stuff. Yeah, Jax, uh, uh, before before we get you out of here, getting back to Bam, not in the top 10 of fan all-star voting, which uh, is an incredible disgrace. Um, listen, it's our fault, by the way. So, oh, like, it, trust me, I know. Heat Nation, I, I'm not wagging my finger at you, but there's more, than, there's, there's more than enough of us to get that man a million votes, two million there's, votes. There's mm-hmm. no way we go to every city, and when the when the winds start happening, you hear those chants. You saw how D Wade was received nationally on his last dance. Like I'm stunned that he didn't like he's not outdrawing Claxton or Kuzma. Those guys are nice players, but this guy he's elite, yeah. Jax, and he's and is taking even more of a step. So just for him, he's not a guy who likes to complain a lot about like the the lack of respect that he gets or the lack of recognition that he gets, but do you, but he's not, he's also not a guy who forgets. He also takes note of that stuff. How do you feel like that is fueling this kind of run that he's on this season? Just been really impressive from him. Yeah. Well, I hope uh, yeah, I think some of it, right? Like, and then the part of it is, you know, fans are just have to vote now so he can wait and see what the, the media vote and the player vote, see if it pulls up. The coaches are definitely, going to have him in the mix. So right. there's that. So he doesn't have to really, really worry about it. Um, you know, first and the 15th, probably take care of a lot of things <laughs> in that man's soul. Um, I, I just think that he knows that he can be elite. 
he knows that he is now the culture carrier that 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 torch is yeah. making his hand hot because uh we're halfway through Udonis's last season and I wouldn't be surprised if the next captain of this team is 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 Bam uh it, if not singularly you know among you know uh him and a couple guys um so I think he's just really focused on elevating his game his defense is elite like let's not even kid ourselves on that front uh and now he's moving into a space where you can only look at Giannis and Joker right. in the sense of what you can what he can do in his totality and Bam's not passing as much but he sure can <laughs> if it's needed yeah. he can definitely do that well we appreciate the time Jax go check him out tonight you guys can hear him of course WQAM the Heat Audio Experience gets going for you. Solana gets going with preheat today at 645. Tommy Tig, Jason Jackson do the whole crew. And then, of course, you guys can watch Jason Jackson tonight. Valley mm -hmm. Sports Sun, a little pregame action, 730. Your coverage gets going. Doing a fantastic job. A man who's broadcasting all over the spectrum. Radio, television. He is the Jack Show. We appreciate it, Jax. Thanks so much for the time this morning. Thanks, Jax. I'm I'm going to get out of my work release program. That, uh, we work <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice curtains in a nice hotel in Dallas. And I lit it well, by the way. That's for your beautiful stream. Okay. We appreciate we it. Appreciate You're a pro's it, pro. You're a pro's, a pro's pro. Now let me go put some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Back after this. Football Friday.
Right. It, it, I'm not sure if he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. But what I got excited about is the way Jax thought the Heat felt about Big Yurt. Well, that's – if Jax wouldn't just throw that out there for no reason. Right. That's pretty stunning if they thought he was going to start. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, like that, – uh, that, that, that surprised me. So, maybe they've been holding off because – you know, they just want to be careful with him. Well, they just, well, no, he's not ready yet, but I'm saying maybe they hold off on oh, making any drastic on moves until they see what, which sucks because the, the it's February 9th, right? Yeah, it's going to be close. The trade deadline, and you're not going to really know. It's going to be close. And then uh, there's, you know, I don't know, man. Look, look, I, I think you're right when you said, like, I don't know how much better an acquisition is going to get than Victor Oladipo. Right. I, I really you don't. People with, don't with giving with giving up nothing and adding him to your giving bench. Giving up nothing, you gained an all star and an all defensive player. And if you don't think that's accurate, go look at the defensive numbers ever since Vic start getting substantial minutes. The lineup with him, Bam, and Jimmy is incredible. It's like it's right. the numbers are the numbers have been right. really, really mm -hmm. impressive. And so if you're telling me, like, oh yeah, you can bring in D'Angelo Russell, I'm like, at the expense of Oladipo playing? Like, right. I don't understand. See, that's what I don't... See, now, because I've been around the Heat for so long, when they talk about bringing a player in, the first thing that comes to mind is, how is he going to affect the defense? That's what I said about when they were talking about adding Donovan Mitchell. Mm -hmm. That's when they were, I'm like, but wait, Donovan Mitchell doesn't play defense. We got those guys. <laughs> right? Right. We already got those guys. That's not the way they built team. They built their team. Right. And so anybody Even though Donovan been, has been I mean he has been amazing this oh year. He's been amazing. Yeah, but but you also if you look uh, uh around at everybody else on that team, oh, they're, they're all defenders. Yeah, the tarantulas. Yeah. Right. So he is playing better defense certainly, but like no, it's like right. you can you can afford it cuz you got Jared Allen and Mobley right, and all, right, these, right. all these guys that they have. They're, they're an impressive team. Right. And and so um, not far behind though. They're then nipping at their heels. Yeah. No, no, no. The thing is, is that am I the only one that seems to get like nervous because I played football? And the thing about it is, is that every week we are told, hey guys, we ain't waiting to turn this around at the end of the year and put on a final charge. We only got 16 of these things. We got to go now. So when I see basketball and they go, you know what? We're getting, we're starting to get into a flow. We's getting it together. And they, they heat do this every year. In my life, every year. Well, last year, last year, last year, last year, last year, last year, they started hot. Last year, they started really hot, which is not normal. But the thing that was impressive with last year, and a lot of that was, and this is, this is the thing that Lowry actually, was best at like he was and wasn't in times this year they just didn't have the record for it, but his best trade for the heat really was keeping them afloat and above water because like he was playing he was only behind durant in minutes played earlier this year right last year when jimmy and bam were out he was taking all of those little hodgepodge guys setting up big year big year was averaging the double double of the 13 games that he played right um that was you know that was the 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 beauty of having Kyle. It's just that he got hurt in the playoffs last year, right? And now you're looking at a team that's like, well, where is he going to be at the end of these games? Are they going to go with him, or is he going to be sitting some of these matchups? It's tough to know. It probably depends on you know how things are going, how they're defending, how he's shooting, right? But um, or what's needed, right? Because see, I I think the only reason why Vic doesn't score, I mean, um, Kyle doesn't score more. He doesn't need to. Right. And we, we can always say, why can't he score more points? I, I think he feels he doesn't need to because when there was no scoring, he would put up 20 points. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say he doesn't contribute much. I just think he knows and has a grasp of the game to understand what is needed out of him at that moment. And you talk about the times when Jimmy and Bam were out and he was scoring 20 and 10 re and 10 um you know assists and stuff like that. So it's not that the talent isn't there, it's just that he's doing a pretty good job of just stepping back and allowing things to happen around him. And I hope 
that people don't take that as a sign of, oh, Kyle slipping. Because that that's not what that means. Yeah, and he's also he you know they 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 got to get his knee right because you don't want a situation like last year where oh. he's out and so yeah, and, you and, and you and you do have this luxury so you know take your time there. Uh, the reports were in the Herald today from Barry Jackson. They're not really looking to trade him. Like, sure, I guess if you need his salary, if like an, a whale is dropped above your lap, but that deal's not out there right now for anybody that's expecting that. Don't look at me like that. I'm just talking about the mechanisms of it, dude. Always I gotta be allowed like, to say things that are possible. Yeah, you can't get mad at everything. I mean, but, but I'm just saying, like, if if they're today, not really talking about trade, like, there's, like there's a whale out there, you're not gonna get uh, a, a whale for no, Kyle I, Lowry. but you have to match salaries. That's why. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So it'd be a, the the young player and right. right, right. But I don't think that's out there. I don't. No. Maybe the John Collins things happen. I don't know. I, I think I, the one thing with John that worries me is one is shooting is really slipped this year, and two, it's a bit of the same factor of. He's more of an offensive player, and this is not – that's not really like what you're looking for in that perfect role as a guy who is a good shooter and is still a dog rebounder. Jack said it right. Big yard, right? But he he does a lot of that stuff, and he can go stand outside by the three-point line if Bam is is cooking in the paint. But do we consider Big Yard a good defender? We don't really know. He's a rebounder. We don't really know. Like it's it's I mean, all he's he got to do is get Mardi Gras beads. He can get a rebound. He's not, yeah, he's a good rebounder. That we know. He's is this, got is this when I think about it, I think about the game he played against the Sixers and he just cooked them. Oh, he's yeah. Good. I understand. No, yeah. That's <laughs> it's just been imprinted got, in my mind. So I'm like, I don't know if this guy plays defense. <laughs> he's uh you're talking about one of the best in the league, though, dude. Still. I mean, still not like a turnstile. Like uh, okay, but but we wouldn't be looking at Joel Embiid the way we look at him if Big Yurt could guard him. You see what I'm saying? Like, there's certain guys that, depending on who's across from them, if you can't cook them, we look at you differently. It's all, yeah, sometimes with Embiid, and I think, and, you know, Bam, it's one of the things that's tough because he does such a good job against him defensively, but he's a moose that he has to handle. So it's it's going to be interesting if that series does happen because Bam's best offensive games in that series were obviously when Embiid was hurt. Right. But by the end of that series, Bam was really guarding him well. Like, right. and I know, I know Embiid, you know, Mr. Porcelain was, oh, my face, oh, this, oh, that. He's always hurt. Um, but what? You can't, like, you ever notice? Can't he help can't, it. He can't just tell a story. Mr. He Porcelain. always has to throw some shade at whoever it is because he don't want to give nobody I just, that I'm much really, credit that he don't I'm just, like. I'm really the team like, that he doesn't no, no, like. Please, I, I can't wait for everybody to believe in the Sixers again. I, I, I just please. Aren't they already doing it? Fall for it again. No, no, no. So I mean, are the Sixers um, basketball cowboys? Yeah. I don't know what it is. No. I don't. I, I got one better for you. Hmm? Are the Sixers basketball cowboys or the Nets? Because mm. they've been talking about the Nets winning championship for the last three years. I think it's more Sixers because I feel like even when the Sixers because the Sixers go even before Kevin Durant like they've been doing this when it was Ben Simmons right. and all them Ben Simmons you know it's and it really just comes down to Embiid everybody knows how he's one of the best players in the league for sure but is it hard to win a championship he's been saddled with two guys right. in Ben Simmons and and James Harden and it's like how could you trust that in the play I don't understand how you could watch an entire guy's career watch him poop the bed every time and still think. It's gonna get better. Even Jimmy, even uh, even Joel said after the series last year, he goes, "He's not Houston James Harden anymore." I'm like, right. "Wow, that's something." Right. That's that's a crazy thing to say. So yeah, you know, it look is. at them. They're, they're, but the Heat aren't far behind, dude. It's not. It's not. You know, the only thing that's probably out of reach for them realistically is Boston right now. But they're a good week away. Like, keep it, keep it going. And somebody has a couple stinkers. I mean, speaking of Boston, look what happened with them last year. They had a slow start. Right. And what right. they ended up with the, the three seed. Or yep. the two seed. Two seed. Two seed. Yep. Two seed. And it didn't even matter because all the games were won on the road, basically, in that series. Which was weird. 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 Very, very, very strange. Um, so I want to get to this. Uh since Stunt and Steve is here, big Canes fan. Uh, what did you think of uh Cormani McLean flipping not i think a surprise but he flipped to uh deon sanders at colorado i mean what you want me to get mad over an 18 year old i don't know i just i, was... I say this every day <laughs> especially this it, every day especially since it didn't come as a surprise because we pretty much been known and it was set in stone once he went to colorado to visit it was like all right like we know that's all the shit 
Because it was like, because the articles are saying, oh, he flipped from Miami. And I'm like, man, I felt like he already left Miami. I felt like he was gone. Already. Right. I mean, he flipped the moment he didn't sign on early signing day, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Everybody in that class signed well, except him. How about the, the quarterback? Oh, from Florida? Oh, 13 yeah. million? What the hell's going on there? Thir- they they so promised him 13 Here's million? what happened. He Evidently, he had a deal that was supposed to be $13 million. I don't know if that's Ain't play. That can't be. I'm going to say this. If that is accurate, college football's in trouble. An well, 18-year-old. Maybe it was accurate that it was promised. Right. It and so delivered. then when the money wasn't right, Right? Then, which means that the school, see, these collectives, the school really doesn't have a lot to do with. Right? So, boosters. right. So they promised the money to him. He signs. Then when it's time to get, you know, a little checky check or something, they they didn't have the money. Mm-hmm. So Florida, you can't be really, a, it's hard for them to get involved. They kind of have to just let him out of it. So they did. Now he's going back, what, to the West Coast? Washington. Know. They said he thinking Washington. Because yeah. there was there was rumors that he was probably going to flip to Oregon, but I think Oregon ended up getting one of the big quarterbacks. But yeah, I don't know if that thirteen million is true because I know that there was reports of the kid who went to Tennessee was a much better recruit than he is was like reportedly at like eight million. So that's why I thirteen think the, million sounds crazy. <laughs> it really does, dude. Here here's my I want the players to get they come up. Of course, I don't have a problem with that. But here's where I have a problem. You don't get NIL until we can actually make money off you. That's the thing that's, that's fascinating what, about it. That's what NIL is. Name, image, and likeness. If you don't have that, then why are you getting these un- ridiculous amounts of money? Because they were talking about, hey, this is how this all started. This whole conversation about paying players was, hey, you selling jerseys yeah. and we not getting a cut. You doing all this and we can't get a cut. You doing these video games, we know it's me, but you can't. Now they can start putting their names on it. And now that's name, image, and likeness. Not a signing bonus. Speaking of name, image, that's and likeness. That's all this is, a signing bonus to come to the school. That's not name, image, and likeness. Speaking of name engineering like this, can you stay in the camera, dude? What happened? You like you completely vanished. She got the, no look. She got the dude. tiny box. She, she got the tiny, the tiny box. box. <laughs> you gonna play the tiny box? She dude? got the tiny We're box. Out of the camera. My head, but I'm not leaning out of the camera. You left look. the camera, dude. I want you two knuckleheads, and this is you too, J Fig. Oh no, not you, Steven. J Fig, and you. What? Okay. First of all, I try to put my face on the mic. So you can hear me clear. However, I appreciate that. J-Fig got this little tiny box. Every time I make a lateral move, my head goes out. Then she complains about Lena. Thank you. Thank you. I just went for lashing out. Dude. I'm not lashing out. I'm, lashing out dude. I'm not lashing out. You are lashing out. Oh, my goodness. Now I'm with Leroy. Yeah. I am. You I... put me up on the tiny box and then say, keep your head in the screen. But it is a funny thing that you mentioned. Like, it's why. And I'm not, again. I'm, cool I'm not with players see, getting paid. It's hard to have this conversation because people think you're being that jerk. I'm against kids get money. I'm not. I'm Obviously. not. But like if you're a company, and some people are cool, like Dan Lambert at ATT who's giving every cane money, you know, to 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 promote the the gym, right? That's cool. But, but I'm it ta- was 500 bucks. It was 500 bucks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We talk about 15, 30, uh, 30 I'm talking, million. I'm saying like if you you're like the canes and you you're supposed to give NIL to Jake Garcia and Tyler Van Dyke. Like, and then by the end of the year, one of them's gone or one of them's hurt. But, like it's, but it's he, kind of a strange thing. It's but like, here's the deal. If like Stetson Bennett should be getting all the NIL right. if, from Georgia. If one guy is, he should own Georgia. Right. If one guy is playing, right. Whose Jersey seals are up. So the way the real world works, if you get a cut, from every jersey sold, that backup quarterback ain't selling no jerseys. You ain't making no money off of it. That's the reality of it. But what we're doing is we are giving these kids money before they play it down. Now, look, I know everybody thinks that everything's – I was 18 years old once. 
and I went up to New to to Michigan from New Orleans after having to work and 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 help around the house to pay bills and take care of my brother and my sister because my mom worked at night. Mm-hmm. These are the things I had to do. So when I got to college, whoo, 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 that first year, and I and so 18 years old, now give me a million dollars. You were at that Glenn Rice Sarah Palin party? No, <laughs> no, they were in Hawaii, dude. Oh my bad. Hey, no, in in Alaska. They were in Alaska. Sorry. Oh, of course. So, so, so think about this. You give me a million dollars, and I've been dirt poor. I don't care how responsible I've been in my life. I ain't never had no money, right? Never owned a car, never had clothes, always wore hand-me-downs. And then you're going to throw a whole bunch of money? Come on. Come on now. Now, once I got further on and I start playing and I knew the responsibilities of playing and doing what I needed to do to be on the field, now I'm in a better place to handle something like that. But I can tell you, we can go to any 18-year-old, say, come to my school, I'm going to give you a million dollars. And I promise you, only about 30% are going to be responsible enough. Hmm. That's because they're 18. Man, if you gave my fraternity a million dollars, the parties we would have. That, see that one, but that's but guess what? Guess, guess I mean, we what? did that with returning the kegs and taking them for deposits, and you know we'd find our way. So we found a way. So that's the thing that I'm really um, curious about in this whole thing. The other thing is, is that everybody don't get in I O, and and that's okay. That's okay. Everybody, you want to talk about? Oh well, why can't he get? What can I get? Um, ma'am, your son. Or, sir, your son, he ain't that guy. Right. You just get a scholarship. You don't get money. And and people got to understand, these are for, these deals are for the elite. And if you're not that, understand that. Understand that instead of two or three or four or five million dollars, you might get 30000 in a bus pass. That's okay. But no, everybody thinks they should be getting a million dollars. So all these kids bounce from school to school to school to school to school. Know who you are, right? Like, know who you are. I'm all for kids getting. I want them to be able to benefit from the talents that they have. Can I ask you something? Sure. You're almost out of the camera again. How come when you yell at these things, you're lecturing Stunt and Steve and not me? Because talking to you is like because he doesn't I'm, take you seriously. Right. That's why talking, you can only like, give serious takes to hey, the producer. Hey, hey. no, to me because he doesn't do it to Marcos. <laughs> <laughs> Having a serious conversation with Tobin is like talking to this Dasani bottle. At some point, he's gonna start laughing. He may spill. Right? He gonna sneeze and go. Oh, excuse me. What were you saying? Some. So, so I, I can't look at him. He can't look at him. The more serious I get, the more he's looking at me, looking at him. <laughs> he looks kind of funny right now. <laughs> like, you can't. We'll take a break. Dolphins, they told Josh Boyd to take a hike. We'll get to that. Hour two next.
time for our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tongue of Iloa. Not Tua Tagovailoa. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Chris Sims can go to hell. Tua Tonga Bailoa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of food. Our Tua the program, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. Tobin and Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. And as D Nando says, Zach Gelb can also go to hell. Well, I'm just kidding, Zach. I'm messing with you. Well, you, we know you hate that song. I mean, you deserve that, dude. Just saying. I'm just saying. And also, your uh, your, your best friend's not here either. And there he is. Look at him. He just passed the Hey, door. look, you're more in the camera than when you're in the out of the studio than in. I don't know what he's doing. Hey, Jackass. What? The room's soundproof. I can't hear you. Oh, uh, you knew what I was saying. <laughs> he's like talking to me. I'm like, how long have you been doing radio? Somebody was saying uh, Zach Gelb can go to hell, too. And I was like, ah, his, his best friend's not here. Oh, oh my goodness. I think Gelby likes me now, though. I, I was on uh, <laughs> pretty recently doing my uh, my adorable things. And, you know, I think we're in a good spot. Uh, you know, he knows Mac Jones sucks. He definitely gone. doesn't think you're adorable. You don't think so? I don't know, man. Anyway, let's get to some headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Heat back on the hardwood tonight against the <clears throat> Dallas Mavericks. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Tip-off is set for 8 o'clock, 645 preheat with Solana. Jason Jackson has the call from the American Airlines Center. Who, who's going? Who's getting Luca? Bam? Or are they going to? Mix it yeah, up. I think they'll mix it up. I think I think it, I think it'll be a mix of uh, I think Vic I think the Vic thing, Jimmy. When, whenever there's a star like that, I think the Heat like to they like mix to it. mix it up. You know what's crazy? If I had to guess early, that, it'll, it'll start with Caleb, Luca, uh, Jokic. They're all like sneaky athletic in that mm -hmm. they can get their bodies in the right place to score. Why are you saying? But that? it doesn't look. Why is that? Why is that? What? What do you mean? This? What do you mean? It doesn't look. That's European basketball. Intangibles. Yeah. It's European basketball. Interesting. It is. Mm. That's how they do it in Europe. They, so you're you saying know, Luke is not athletic, huh? I didn't say. Uh, Gogi was athletic. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The first thing I said was they're kind of, they're sneaky athletic in sneaky? that they can still get to their spot because they don't do it like John Moran, mm. who's just explosive fast or whatever, but they still get their shots. All right. All right. This guy. Did it. Okay. See, see, see what I mean? See why I can't see why I look at you and not him? <laughs> no, I mean that's fine. You're right. Because when I'm looking at you now, Who else I want to chop you to throw. Who else is Max Struess? Say how he's sneaky athletic too. I mean, Tyler's very athletic. He's not sneaky athletic. He no. just he's just have athletic he's athletic. He's got a burst. He's I mean, Struz has some athletic. Oh, yeah, you see his hops. Uh -huh. That's athletic. Tobin's not sneaky athletic. No, I'm not. No, sneaky I anything. saw that wall jump. Anytime he did anything athletic, he sweat through a suit. <laughs> Man, my son, my son is uh, doing this jujitsu now. Which, by the way, happy birthday, is my he, boy! Happy birthday, Tommy! Hey, hey, you're in hey, class right now. You can't hear. Hey, this. so, so, so is uh, is he? Does he sweat like you? Dude, that's the thing. <laughs> he sweats like me. Like, and, so and that and that gee does not breathe. Oh, it's, it's it's like a bathrobe. It's like a bathrobe, dude, and it's got the double knot on the uh, on the old uh, on the old uh, white belt. Hey, so so are the other kids really really serious, and he's like you and just having fun. He is giggling the entire right. time. That's what I'm saying. He's, I just he's giggling the entire time. He loves it. Right, it's like until he until he gets hit. Well, there's no punching, but it's all grapples. Yeah, it's all grappling. But he does. He got uh he got upset because like. The first class that he did, it was all kids. He was bigger than, and then the second time around, he's just turned seven. They put him with a ten-year-old, and uh, he got humbled. 
He got humbled. <laughs> he was mad because <laughs> he, 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 he just wanted to go in there and just strong arm everybody. Yeah. yeah. But the next time, but I was proud of him because then the third class, he came back on that same 10 year old, fucked out of it, you know, because uh, the guy got on top. So it's a, uh, it's a fun sport. He's doing, he's really liking it. He's really, he's really digging it. It's fun. It's fun to see him uh, to do that. I he needs some time. Tommy play like he, I don't know if he like, when you say we play at home, he tries to trip me and choke me. Yeah, out. he didn't know. He's because he's learning trips. That's why. That's like you grab the you grab you get your grips in the gi, and then you put the leg. Whoosh, basically, like I don't know why you. they don't wear tight gi, so you can't grab on. <sighs> there's there's no gi. There's there is no gi where they basically do it in Under Armour like dry fit, and then there's gi, which is and it's basically what you're saying. There's a difference between in in the gi you can grab. Uh, you know, clothing and then a nogi, basically, I don't think you can because it's skin tight. Right. So that's how that goes. But I think people, I honestly think people just like looking cool in the karate outfit. Yeah, but not, not until you get one of them serious belts. I know. And they got you the know? belts up on the wall. I'm like, ooh, that's kind of cool. Right. Have you ever done that? No, no. Not me neither. No. I did Taekwondo when I was a kid and I got up to like a yellow stripe, which wasn't even a yellow belt. I quit. Oh, so it wasn't even a belt yet. You were still getting stripes. It was a white belt with a yellow stripe. It was like the second level. Yeah, it was like the second level. It was you, at the YMCA. You were excited when you got that stripe too, huh? I think so. I was. I was young. No, I didn't do that stuff. I was young, but it was. Uh, but it's cool. They they enjoyed. I saw uh, there was like this one. Uh, there was this one lady, and she was like a brown belt. I was walking out. I was like, Jesus, that's kind of making me nervous. Like little Valentina Shevchenko, head kick. Okay. Yep. I right, listen. If I ever get in a fight, Shmeath. I don't want to go out like that. Shmeathan says, uh, "Hey Tommy, happy birthday, you bum!" <laughs> I'll let him know you said something, Shmeathan. He'll appreciate it. You mean he catches straight? Of course. I mean, I he, listen. He's not. He's he's not above the law just because he's seven. <laughs> he's not. He, he's not above. He's not above Shmeathan strays. That doesn't happen. Uh, let's get a weather update from the DeBesman and Dover Law Firm, your accident attorneys.com. Free consultations 24 7. Call them at 866 more. Wow. It's a nice, yeah, beautiful, light overcast. It's like those high clouds. So the sun's getting through. Beautiful day. I haven't seen, uh, I think the wind's coming out of the east because I saw planes going from right to left. Um, and the wind's light. Look, nothing's moving. Tell you It'll what, it's be a cloudy five day. miles an hour, and it's probably around. 80, 81 degrees right now. It was a little warm this morning, so we're getting back. We're thawing out. We're thawing out down here. I'll tell you where it's a cloudy day. At the Boyer household. Fired! But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's why it's not. You get fired as a coach, you still get your money. It's not like a player. Yeah, but still. You know, isn't there still embarrassment? Hey, I mean... To the first and the fifteenth, when those checks come, fair enough. You get over it, fair enough. Like think about it: if he he's getting two million, two and a half million a year, right? Mm -hmm. That's two hundred thousand a month, right? So every other week, you're getting a check for a hundred thousand. How sad can you be? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You say, you know what? I don't like him. <laughs> oh, the nerd Mike they McDaniel. Fire me. You think he called Mike McDaniel a nerd on the way then, out? Then Definitely. his wife. Then his wife. Well, no, because the way look, if you're in that, if you're in the coaching game, you understand how he goes. You understand. He wants his guy, right? You know, huh? He want, because he wants his guy. Well, well, that and if you look at where the most changes need to occur, and who needs to be more consistent, my thing is with Boyer is this. This is now two years in a row where they started off strong defensively. Then they had that lull where he was kind of sitting back. And then it got to crunch time and he started being aggressive again. Right? Like the year before that, a uh, flow took over. And then they became real aggressive at the end. Supposedly. So, like, we don't supposedly, know. Not. We don't know. We don't but know. I'm just, but I, uh, again, people, do, people do think that flow took a big hand in the defense last year. And, and so, and that's when it turned around. Mm -hmm. So, I just think that maybe what he wants to do, and I'm going to give him a pass from this standpoint. Dude, they had so many injuries in that secondary. True. And I'm telling you now, how you going to play defense and your star is Noah Igbenogany? 
right? He did win a game. He he did. And then your other star, and kudos to the, like Xavier Howard. I'm gonna tell you right now, the things that he played all year with are unbelievably painful. And he had to run, and it looked like a lot of times he couldn't run very fast. And I didn't care Still because though, I know what he was going through. Arguable that Noah won more games than X. Technically. Okay, so 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 here's the deal, smart ass. You get to pick which guy you want moving forward. I'll take X. You can have Noah. No thanks. Okay, then. Just Stop saying. it. See what I'm saying? Did win See what he does? This is why I look at Steve. Team this game. is why I look at Steve. This is why. <laughs> All I ask is this. Uh, X, please don't hold out again. <laughs> oh, it's coming. He ain't going to hold out. They're going to have a lot more money because I think uh, they're going to do something with Byron Jones. Although, you can't cut a guy when he's hurt. By the way, well, the wins out of the West. Well, that, but that, that's the thing that's missing from this year is like I think a big thing was people thought that he was they were going to try and move on from him, and then he got surgery. Right. Here's the other thing though. That front four might be one of the best in the league. Well, that's why that that's that's the one thing though. If you if you're Mike McDaniel and you thought Josh Boyer was fine, nothing special, right? Mm -hmm. Like you felt we look around that defense. I see a lot of playmakers, right? Yeah, Wilkins, Sealer, Chubb, Jalen Phillips, uh, Javon Holland, Javon X when he's healthy. Yep. If you think that the defensive guys, okay, we get it. You're aggressive. You blitz a lot. That's your thing. But you're Mike McDaniel, and you think to yourself, I could get somebody better than this. I know Stephen Ross will pay for whoever I want. Right. And Here, I can get my guy like Vic Vangio is apparently the big uh, the big name. Here's what here's what I to. would say. Here's what I would say. Yeah, because he was with him in Denver. So I would say this. You can talk about styles or whatever, but here's what you need to be better and more consistent. You need that dude at linebacker in the middle of the field, and then you need health in the secondary. I wouldn't do anything to that front four or the front six guys, right? Um, I think. I would try to bring Melvin Ingram back. Uh, and and then I would try in the draft or via trade to to find, you know, a linebacker that you can depend on to make the calls and go plug up a hole. Right? Because it, it got Baker's to a point. What, he's too small, you think, Jerome Baker? I just think that we got caught up in the last few years of linebackers who can cover tight ends because tight ends were a thing. Mm -hmm. And those same teams that were about covering tight ends are getting run all over. And you look at the teams like they were good on the run this year, though. That look, was the one look thing. at but look I think at, well, because of the front, because the front four. Though. Look, look at somebody like yeah, and Christian Wilkins had a hundred tackles. So I like who was that and Zach Sealer. Yes. Um. Good so luck. so good when you look, look at what San Francisco does, like. Their whole defense kind of starts with their linebackers and works for, forward and back. Mm. Most teams that have those dudes in, in the middle of the field that run everything, those are the better defenses. You don't ever say with one of the better defenses, they don't have a linebacker. And so you need one of those guys. Um, and, and I think that'll make a big change. So they're going to change the scheme somewhat. I still would like them to be aggressive. I think the coolest thing in football is to see 11 men up. It, it's fun to watch. You're terrified because you're thinking, as a running back, I'm thinking, I, I want them to put 10 guys in the box because you run in a certain way. All the guys from the other side can't get over there. So if you break that front line, however fast your little legs will take you, that's as far as you can go. Unless, of course, you're Robert Smith and then you take him to the house. I don't want to say that. I, I know. Yeah, that. I, I just, you know what that's called? Preemptive strike. Because he had the look. Most likely. Right. So I just think that I don't was know. Was Robert playing in that game, by the way? Or were you just in on that carry? Like, or, 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 were you, or was he I think hurt? he was hurt. So it wasn't even like Robert was in the game and he no, was just fresh I, on the I'm mind. Not, I'm, not, I'm, like, not, I'm trying to think. He might have. He might have been, the thing is, is that we played a lot together and we knew what each other did. And they never really told us when 
to come in, to go in or come out. So we kind of just did it on our own. So it, I I would like to think it was third down. If he was playing, I would have still been in there. Charles Davis is a bozo, according to Dr. Toboggan. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. You guys can text 305-567-0560. And uh, we uh, take up my fancy coming up later on this hour. Back with more after this.
for number two -oh with Tobin and Leroy. Yeah, life. Life is the only thing we need. Maybe All right, welcome back, everybody. I feel like I'm so far away from the camera. I know that you is. look good. You I look can't. Good. I can't reach my keys so I can peruse. All right. Well, do you better. Want, you know what? I'm gonna get you one of these, and we're gonna put that there, and that's just gonna be yours, so you could have your laptop. One of what? One of these webcam. One of the webcams. Oh no, I can't. I can't do that. Why not? Because I don't know. Like, if my password is remembered in my computer. <laughs> Um, I can't put it in somewhere else. I mean, I don't want to like look, but I can find your password. Like you can go and look under like in settings and passwords. All you just oh, need okay. to do, I got you. It would All pop right. up for you. So All have right. you not checked your email in like how long? No, I checked. No, my he email. has to say on, only on his laptop. Only on my laptop, but I have I have the um the uh, mail on my phone. I can just pull that up, but I don't never have to keep putting the password in. That's when you know you accidentally when you go through your computer and they say please put password and they send you that signal to your phone I, like i call them i call you guys all the time and say hey i can't log in mm -hmm. well, i don't know what my password is do like when you're looking for a new defensive coordinator like do they have to consult like christian wilkins and be like hey no what do you what do you like no no, no that's no. always the thing with offensive coordinators like they're doing this with kyler murray like oh what do you like kyler for the head coach mm -hmm. first of all Shame on you if you think the player knows, right? Kyler Murray just wants somebody to not give him a hard time, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, like, it, and, and think about it. As a player, you're probably not going to like the guy that pushes you, but you're gonna, he's going to get the best out of you. And so I always question having input from a player because a lot of times they just want the easiest path. And it's, it's human nature. You're not, you know, no matter what you do at your job, you don't want the guy who's the hard ass at work. You want the guy that's going. So if you have a say so in who they bring in, are you going to be more inclined to pick the guy that gives you the easiest Please, path? Easy right. path. So, no, I don't think players especially in football. Now, I will say this. If if Dan Marino were in his 10th or 11th year and the team went to Dan Marino, I understand. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that much experience for sure. Right. Um, the, wait, so they're going to Colin Murray, and guess what? Green Bay didn't go to uh, Aaron Rodgers. So you're not going to go to Javon Holland and ask him? No. Should. Well, you should. Why? Why? The this is the problem with this world. Why do you think you should go ask the player who you want your coach to be? He's snowman. He knows. I just wanted to say his nickname. I love his nickname. But but, <laughs> great but, nickname. but really, do do we not not understand? Like, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If we got a new program director, should they come ask us who the new program director should be? Hmm. Uh, let me let me let me stop you there. No. I mean, I like Golan. I wish they would have for a couple of other stops for sure. I'm I'm just saying. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, no, you don't know. When the last program I like the one that didn't rob me, <laughs> but I didn't have my choice. Right. But when Lynn came in, I got you too. Got everybody. Everybody. <laughs> like a the, thief in the night. So, but but you understand, like. When they when they brought Lynn in, taking a freelance check. Nobody asked you. You it shouldn't matter. No, because the, you don't know what his job entails better than the people hiring him. So to come and ask you would be kind of ridiculous. Like players don't know what coach coaches do a lot of stuff, dude. First of all, we just look at coach what they're doing with the players, but you don't realize they're game planning. For the next week, the week up. So say if you played, uh, say if you play Atlanta this week, right? So they're doing all the stuff on the on the game plan for this week in Atlanta, mm -hmm. while also preparing the game plan for the following week. So when you come in on Wednesday, you can just keep it going. So they're always a week ahead while doing the same things now. 
you know, for, for this game. So understanding all that and who's coordinating what and scheme and all that, a player has no idea what his responsibilities are. I don't want him having input. Do you want a coach that's just like McCoachin? Because I feel like if they go Vic Fangio, that's like the exact opposite of McCoachin. Um, he's old. He he reeks of curmudgeon. Sounds like Chan Gailey. Right. But here's here's the deal you have to understand. An offensive coach is one of them guys who smoked a little skinny cigarettes. Or vapes. Or vapes. Allegedly. Right. A defensive coach got a big old fat dip in his mouth and wearing cowboy boots. Right? They're just different sides of the ball that that defensive coaches are more intense. When you look on the sideline, your most intense coaches are defensive coaches and special teams coach. Those are your most intense guys. Everybody else is kind of, you know, laid back, having conversations, or what have you. I need somebody to be consistent with that. A tough guy that understands that, hey, you can't just be in there vaping telling the guy he got to stop the run. You need to have a little red ass about you. You got to be hot. You got to go in there with an attitude so the players get it. That's what defensive coaches well, we've seen do. The, we've seen the drugs that O-line coaches use. Oh, geez. We've seen potentially – what an offensive play call uses with the vape. Offensive line coaches are like that too. Can't be having yeah. Offensive line coaches are a little uh a uh, little fired up. A little cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Yeah, but you have to. Look at what you're asking your players to do. You know what? Right? I wish you they... can't go in there singing kumbaya and having a conversation. You you telling here, you telling the outside linebacker or a DN go set the edge. Why don't they do the those big grains falling? Huh. <laughs> Why don't they do the sled anymore? With the coach on it at the end. Is that just, is that too high school? Dude. Do you want him to do it? No, 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 Steve, Steve, Steve. Not hitting anybody. Steve, 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 I got this. Will you stop treating (laughs) the sport I love like Friday Night Lights? Will you please stop? Have you ever watched Friday Night Lights? No. It's a great show. No, it's not. It's a a movie. Dude, it's a movie. It's a great movie, but it's a great show. No, it's not. What are you talking? Have you have you seen it? Because here's the deal. Here's the thing about when I watch football movies. The only football movies I really watch are the true ones. So remember the Titans. Oh yeah. Um, Super realistic. That's the true one. Remember the Titans is a real story. So is Friday Night Lights. No, it's based. It's based on football in Texas. Oh my god. (laughs) This is this is what this is what I have to deal with. Y'all think Friday Night Lights. Is real football. Have you seen the ending of Remember the Titans? It's a ridiculous play. <laughs> looks like that, some, that, wait, but but they it they, looks like something you've been coaching. I even watch. Up. I even watched the um, what's the uh, gridiron game with Rock? That's another true story. I watch. I like that. Brian saw true story, like that. Now I did like um, Blindside until Michael Orr, the guy who was about says. They took some liberties. Yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Right, but no, real stories. So no, to real. The sled. Fo- when does the sled go away? High school, college? Did Bo sit the- on the sled? Hold on. But- did Bo sit on? No, <laughs> the offensive line coach did though. Oh. So, so let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. What do you think the purpose of that sled is? Man's man's man, no, no toughness. What is the purpose of working it? together? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, what what is the purpose of the sled? It's just to get off the ball, hit, give a little push, make sure everybody's carrying their weight. So I was right. <laughs> Makes me think of those Manny Diaz tackling drills. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> you see why I don't look at him? <laughs> Does everybody not understand? It's Friday, dude. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Take a break. Tickle my fancy is next. AM.
Ladies and gentlemen, to take a look and ahead at this weekend's NFL playoff slate, we like to call this Tickle My Fancy, as Leroy Horde, football expert, never went on the sled. We had sleds. Oh. We had, um, they had the one we had to do for special teams, we had to do the tackling sled. Mm. Everybody had to do that because... Keep in mind, I never had to tackle anybody till I got to. Um, I think I played punt team on in college, but then I had to run down on kickoff in uh, in Cleveland. So we had to do tackling drill. Let's get to the slate, Leroy. Starting on Saturday, four thirty, the Jacksonville Jaguars travel to Arrowhead and take on the Kansas City Chiefs who are nine-point favorites. Does this game tickle your fancy? It does because it's playoffs, and and I'm going to be watching to see if you have to answer for your crimes yet again. I, I don't have any crimes left to answer. Oh, for. no, no, no. No, no, no. Soon there's as not, that a, new, first, wait, there's wait, not wait. a new trial every, soon year, every that, game. As soon as that first pick comes and you send that first tweet out. Maybe I won't. Okay. We'll see. Maybe I won't. Liar. Liar. Maybe I won't. Yes. No, you, know. you don't know. Come on. You already got We do say. know. We do know because you like, right. But I, I am, um, I would say that they got about as much of a chance as the jumbo shrimp. Oh, man. <laughs> right. You think reality is going to hit them? It's not that. I just think that, look, they're in different places. For sure. Right. Yep. This is the first taste of success that that team and Trevor Lawrence have had. And, they, and they're actually been pretty good this year. If they win this game, there's no reason they can't win the Super Bowl. He's trying to throw the scent off. Well, I'm just saying. If they win this game, there's no reason they can't win the Super Bowl. Is that not a true statement? You don't believe that. So so let me get this straight. Well, well, let me get this straight. Yeah. I'll give let's just say Jack, like I do believe every time you play this game, you have a chance because of my own situation. Right. So I'm never gonna say it. so say Jacksonville wins. Yeah. Then they're gonna turn around and get past Buffalo or Cincinnati. First of all, if they get past Kansas City, there's no reason they can't be Buffalo. Cincinnati, all right. I'm a little bit more of a believer in them. Buffalo, we've seen them. They're they're dicey. They're right. dicey. Yeah. I think that I think they're teetering a little bit. They've had they, I, they, I, I they think give up I, a lot of points, even though they score a lot of points. Hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying I think they're gonna win the Super Bowl. I'm just saying if they win this game, there's no reason they can't win the Super Bowl. This is the best team, is it not? You you know you I would say Cincinnati is. Really? Okay. Yeah. Just more elite weapons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say more elite weapons. Um, but I would say between Cincinnati, Buffalo, and Kansas City, you're splitting hairs trying to determine who's the best because they all have deficiencies. Uh, it's just a matter of where they can take advantage of. Them. But my fans is tickled, by the way. Tobin hedging his takes open for wiggles. Yes, My yes. fancy is tickled. You are UCF Andy. Tobin is zip lining rat from one ship to the next. Yes, come on, man. It's like no, you act like no one, nobody knows you here. Right. What do you mean? I'm not doing anything. I'm yes, just you saying. Are. I, I'm just saying. If they win this game, there's no reason they can't win the Super Bowl. He wants to be the guy that, at the end of the day, if it doesn't happen, he's safe. But if it does happen. He's going to be the first one saying, I told you. You really didn't tell us anything. Like, last week was a win-win for him because he was going to call either Herbert a bum yes. or Lawrence Which a bum. Which he is. Yes. And I don't feel like he's answered for his crimes. Wait, wait, wait. So, Trev's not a bum anymore? I got to give I gotta give it a word. I, I got to give credit where credit's due. You want a playoff game. In his second year. Yeah. That's why he's got immunity this week. That's why I don't think I'm going to commit any crimes. Even if he goes out there and throws a four-picker, doesn't matter. He advanced. Tell you game First suit. of all, stop. You are lying. I'm not. Because if he throws a pick and one gets dropped, you're going to be nope. hot. Nope. I can't. He won a playoff game in the second year. 
It's over. Okay. It's so over. You're, you're no longer. I'm not going to bash him. I'm done. Okay. That's what you said. I about, had a little fun that's last That's what you week. said about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, listen, I, I'm talking to my parole officer right now. Listen, I had a little fun. I, I just got out of jail, went to the bar. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen again. I promise. You're a criminal. <laughs> and I don't Minus believe one. criminals. That's exactly correct. For lying. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, coming up at 8.15 on Saturday, the New York football giants venture to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Philadelphia is a seven and a half point favorite. Wow. What say you, Leroy? Does this game tickle your fancy? Yes, because of what I saw at New York last week. My fancy is tickled. Um, what Daniel Jones in that running game and how they use um, Saquon Barkley, uh, they looked really good. Um, so I don't think it can happen again because they have proven that, you know, they kind of mysterious where they end up with. They won 10 or 11 games this year during the regular season. Who? Philly? The Giants. Oh, the Giants won nine. They made two playoffs with nine wins? No, they had, they had a tie. Oh, so they went nine, seven, seven and, one. and one. All right. Um, I can't see them doing it again. Um, although the version of them that I saw last week could compete with a lot more teams than we give credit mm -hmm. to. But Man, they, if Daniel Jones could do that more than one week in a row, we would be having totally different conversations. So uh, my fans tickle, but I think the Eagles are going to get them. All right, Leroy, on Sunday at 3 o'clock, just 30 minutes before Heaton Pelicans, the Cincinnati Bengals take on the Buffalo Bills, who are currently a five-and-a-half-point favorite. Game of the week. Cincinnati is not a five-point underdog to Buffalo. I, I, don't, I don't know what people have been watching. Um, the Bills are good, but they struggle at times and, 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 and tend to give up a lot of points. They're reckless. Right. I feel Pretty like they're reckless. That, that, that would be it. Um, I think Cincinnati is going to win. Uh, I just think that Joe Burrow has proven he can handle a lot of situations that sometimes Josh Allen gets a little careless in. And I think Cincinnati it, it, it can win. He should have an audible that's just called Willy Nilly. <laughs> Willy Nilly on two. <laughs> uh, all right. And finally, Leroy, Jerry Jones, his Dallas Cowboys venturing to San Francisco, technically Santa Clara, to take on. The 49ers, San Francisco is a four-point favorite at Levi's Stadium. I think this is one of those games where you see all that talent on Dallas. You see how they played last week. And you get your hopes up high. And then San Francisco comes out on Sunday at about – what time game start? That starts at 6.30. At 6.45. They're going to come out and punch Dallas in the mouth, and that's going to be the end of it. How many picks is uh, Dak throwing? I mean, the way they, the way I think San Francisco is going to just push them around, it won't even matter. They're going to plug the run. Then they're going to force Dak into maybe some mistakes. But if they don't, they're going to just beat them up on the offensive and defensive lines. That's what they – San Francisco is the bullies of the NFL right now. Yep. They don't care who their quarterback is. They don't care what you think they're going to do. They're going to take their chunky wide receiver. They're going to take they their talented tight end, their third-string quarterback, and that front, that line of scrimmage, and they're going to beat you up. Who is the top moose left in the postseason? Would you say it's Debo Samuel? Would you say it's Josh Allen? Would you say it's Travis Kelsey? Ooh. Would you say it is hmm, Saquon Barkley? Mm -hmm. Top moose left in the playoffs, Leroy. Josh Allen. Josh Allen is top Sim moose. Simply because he's a moose at a position 
where Moose is not required. Right? Right? All the other guys play positions where, you know, their bodies fit their position. Except for Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel is like, he he's built like, who's the uh, kid from, um, that, that um, reminds me of the kid that came from Florida State. That went to Arizona. You know what I'm talking about. Play, play with Anquan Ari- Bolden? Anquan Bolden. That's who he reminds me of. Because Anquan Bolden, Bolden played a great, had a great NFL career, and everybody complained that he could never get open. But all he did was catch the damn ball. And they start, they didn't, wouldn't pay him because they say he gets no separation. He always catches the ball. He has 100 catches every year. So, yeah, that's who Debo Samuel reminds me of. Might be a little bit faster. Right. But thick, you know, kind of. Just a moose. A moose. Just a moose. A moose. Dude. But I think Josh Allen is the moose because um, nobody wants to get dumb trucked by a quarterback. Well, that is Tickle My Fancy. Get a little cat talk coming on up. As the Panthers get themselves a nice little performance yesterday. Nice little, but had to do it with some unexpected heroics yesterday as well. Cat talk here on the ticket is brought to you by our friends at Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out when it's game time. Make Celsius a part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of the Florida Panthers. Back after this.
serving up the champagne. Pop. It's my house. Come on. Turn it up. Uh. Welcome back, everybody. It's Holman and Leroy. Hello, J. Fig. Hey, Jennifer. Coming from hey. us from the fortress of Doom. I don't know what's going on there. Why, why does her background look like she, like, you know, is a superhero? Her background looks like the no. The background looks like she's in the um in in the room where you know when they uh talk about the 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 people that they live with in the house. Yes, a yeah. confessional. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Like Love Island. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something you want to confess, JP? No. Won't tell you won't tell anybody. Yeah, okay. You're the okay. first to tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We want you to tell us everything. No. <laughs> Minus one. <laughs> no. Get to some headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Run down of things. The Heat back on the hardwood tonight against the yep. Mavs. Tip off is set for eight. The Dolphins fire Josh Boyer. We talked about it a lot last hour. <laughs> we talked about it a lot yesterday. <laughs> Dude, did you know? No one. Are you sure? Well, I'm positive. Are you, okay, that, you, doesn't, that didn't sound that very That sounded convincing. like Tobin trying we, to wiggle so, out of something. So here's what happened. We were doing Robbie's podcast. And we were talking about it, and Leroy goes, "Yeah, you know the Dolphins. They fired the defensive coordinator, and so we did this. So it wasn't yesterday; it was Wednesday night. Wednesday night. So it was hours before it, and we're like, and, and you know, I'm pretty up on Twitter, but I was at, I took my kid to jujitsu, so I wasn't on it the whole time. I was like, did I miss Josh Boyer getting fired? And he goes, Oh, oh no! That, I mean, I'm at the, I'm at the Browns defensive coordinator. Did you know? He tried to apologize. Did you know? Josh Boyer no. was fired before he was fired. No. Are you face. I, you very, I, I mean, you I was got a little just, rascally face right now. I would just he has say, to look straight in the eye. I would just look say. Look at me. Look at me. Leroy. Straight I, I into the say, camera. <laughs> I would just say I was working the numbers. Hmm. And the numbers said that there was a chance. You were okay. adding up. Even though, like, we talked about this beforehand. Like you were working Stephen we, Ross's no, number. No, we talked about this before. It couldn't have be something as simple as Mike wants his guy there. Yeah. I, and, and I don't think there's anything so, wrong with that. And, and, and sometimes when you're forced to have a staffer, what ends up happening is, is the first opportunity you get, you want your guy in there. Like I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know to have idea. Like it, did we all know some, somebody was going to change. Right. For sure. Right. And if you go through good, if like you, I heard his when you heard his comments after uh, after the with Chris Greer, I was like, it wasn't a ringing endorsement. It was kind of like you know he said he said nice things generically, and I was like, yeah, but what does he have to say? Like because like, it's like I, I, when I'm listening to these, I'm like, okay, Tua, they were pretty definitive on Christian Wilkins, pretty definitive on. Then when he was asked about the defense, he goes, oh, I was first of all, he was proud of the players. No, not the because I think he was asked about Josh Boyer, and uh, and it was just kind of like, eh, that was nice. He could go either way, but as we say, leave some wiggle room, and that's what I felt Mike McDaniel did. I was very very proud of the the defense, um, the coaching staff, and the players um, on how uh, on the specifically the very end of the season. Um, I think the last uh, uh, three regular season games in. A place of adversity they they found their best self i think i couldn't be prouder of yesterday specifically um with you know you're talking about seven sacks and turnovers and um you know just really aggressive play so very very proud of the the way the defense finished the season so he's like he's proud generically of the defense and then he was asked about coaching changes right mm -hmm. will it be any changes to the coaching and he was just like well can I get a little time? Pretty early. I mean, I think 24 hours ago, we might have had a lead, maybe. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I've found from my experience in the National Football League is that it's very um, long. It's very emotional. Um, and you're not always – you can lend yourself to living with regret if you – um, make any sort of decisions emotionally. So we're going to go through um, the process and you got to kind of let things simmer for the, just really the entire coaching staff, 
just like you do with players um, and, and have communication, but it's going to, it's going to take a minute and we're, um, Literally we're just out of, we're just out of, um, I, I, I'm just getting my feeling back in my, in my hands from the, the cold winter, um, Buffalo skies. Apparently he put on some mittens and hey, then fired Josh. Wait, fire wait, 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 Two minutes ago, Steven said 10 seconds. <laughs> I think that was the other cut. Oh, it was a cut before. It was two cuts. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he feels that way when he talks sometimes. <laughs> um, like, uh, all right, so. I need to go through the process of talking. You know what's crazy? And then. You want me to tell you why that's not accurate? Mm -hmm. Because the uh, meetings, everybody has an uh, exit interview. And that happens the day after the season. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he knew. I look. I I I don't think that Bory did a terrible job. I just think that sometimes coaches don't want to be, for lack of a better word, typecast, and this is what they do. But sometimes, if you do it really well. Like this team over the last couple of years has done an incredible job of disguising blitzes, either lining everybody up. They couldn't do it this year because of who was playing in the secondary. And I understand that. And that's why earlier in the year, there was a lot of free runners, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to find a defense that allowed you to have all these new guys in it. And usually when you do that, this happens to defenses all the time. When they get nervous, they go to base. So they signal base. If they have a blitz and you move around or switch and they don't, they can't figure it out, base. And I think that's what happened, and they kind of got picked apart a little bit then. But I don't really blame him because you thought you were going to have Byron Jones and Xavier Howard, Javon Holland, and who's the other um, – Brandon they lost Jones. Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones. He was, he was one of their best best right. pitchers. And Brandon now, those four guys, when playing together, did all kind of crazy things in the secondary and on the line of scrimmage, especially with those two safeties. Now you take two of those guys out. One of the guys is extremely injured. You can't really you locked them up in man to man, but you really couldn't. Right? And then all of a sudden you found a way, and at the end of the year, the defensive line came along, giving those guys a better chance to make plays. Yeah, it feels like it's gone from a secondary team to a front four team. Like it's it like had those, to. Those are the it, best players. But but that's kudos to the coaching staff for being able to find another way of doing it instead of the way they did the two years, because you had to do that. So yeah, I can understand that he wants his guy in, he wants to make a change, but I I'm going to be hard-pressed to blame uh, a defensive coach for what happened defensively this year because it was all centered around uh, injuries. Do you think that also the idea they gave a lot of money to Bradley Chubb, who I would say was kind of a disappointment, although I do think that there was an uptick from Jalen Phillips, uh, getting a guy like Vic Fangio who coached him, I mean, knows him, you know, is mm -hmm. that like a benefit? Like they they feel like, you know, maybe mm – -hmm. Wilkins and Sealer and Phillips mm -hmm. are all kind of there, but like you do have this, you know, this outsider that you brought in, and it doesn't feel like he played quite to his potential. And then if you, because if you really got him going, and I mean, you're talking about what Elite, could this, right. yeah, this could be the scariest, one of the scariest front fours in the league. You could be San Francisco West. Right, right. Um, And that's why earlier I said that I wanted to see them go get a stud linebacker, right? So that when you think about defensive football, they have players at every single level. You got guys up front, intermediate in the linebackers, and deep with the safeties and, and, and corners. Um, right now, the middle of the field seems to be almost impossible to protect if you're a defender for the Dolphins. Um, so um, I think what Vic Fangio brings is um, he'll bring a style of defense that you know, Chubb is familiar with. Um, it worked in Denver, but guess what he had in Denver? 
Chubb and, and Vaughn. Yep. So, like, understand they had, like, those guys are closer to linebackers than Jalen Phillips is. Jalen Phillips is a pass rusher. He's a big boy. Um. So we'll see. I. A a good linebacker, in health, I think makes that defense so much better. Uh, let's get to some cat talk here. Brought to you by Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out. When it's game time, make Celsius a part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of the Florida Panthers, who won yesterday. They lit up the Montreal Canadiens six to two. Ooh, who was in goal? Alex Lyon. I'm not making that up. Yeah, no, he's, he's being for real. Sergei Bobrovsky got hurt like three minutes into the game, lower body. And uh, so this Lion so, guy. So this Lion fella comes in and because uh, Knights hurt too. And uh, locked it up, dude. Locked it up. Is he pulling my chain? Swear to God. Oh, he's being for real. I'm d- dead ass. See, this is why he's... Understand how... I'm not in on anything. This is, this is the truth. <laughs> understand wh- why I could be a little skeptical at some of you. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Donovan Cork. Yeah, we know. <laughs> no, that's a real guy, Alex Lyon. He won. He helped. Was he me. the third string? Uh... I think he's the... Ba- he's, they brought him up. He's on... Oh, the, 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 you know, they, everybody has their street goalie. Remember Zamboni guy? That's right. Zamboni guy. <laughs> uh, no, so he was uh, he was in that last night. And then Matthew Kachuk had a couple of goals. So uh, He is lighting it up, dude. He's up, everything. Dude. I can't believe that he is everything that everybody thought he would be and more, and the team's worse. Look, it just took a little TTL from old Tobes uh, on Paul Maurice. He's really oh, turned it on, turned it around, you know. Don't I'm, start. I'm sorry that, that I had. To, wow. I'm sorry I had to say things that Minus were a little bit one. mean, but I, I do feel like Paul has taken the. Oh, y'all on first name basis. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Paul has taken the the TTL and turned it turned those L's into W's. Did you call him a bum? He was dead to me last week. And you also said we got a guy who's losing this. He is. Him. I mean, that's factually correct. Most losses. Okay, a lot of Panther friendly calls yesterday. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, that, I think that's why I, I think that's where I turned for me. I was like, you know oh. what? I kind of like this Paul Maurice. He took a page out of Old Spo. I like it. I like it. Do it. Do more of that. Do more. Listen, more more coaches would be uh, all right if they followed Spo's playbook. Yeah, next time, just say, "Do not find me in a show." He did get fined. He got fined. Paul, Maurice, lo- Paul got Maurice looks like the guy that does that cooking show. Paul Maurice got fined twenty five thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. For his for his officiating rant. It wasn't really a rant. His his sass. He basically got twenty five thousand dollars for sass. Is that unbelievable? Yep. We should start like, charging you for sass. Here's here no, but here's the deal. You know what would fix that? Be better. Yes. Why? Like, you know what? If they sucked, fine. But if they were good and you're just complaining, then yeah, find them a hundred grand and show. Dude, stop it with this. Look at these plays. Right? But if they, if the officials sucked, let them deal with it. They have, according to what these leagues do to protect their officials, they have no incentive to be better. That bothers me. Everybody else in each profession has to be accountable to what they do on the field, on the ice, on the court. And it bothers me that the people officiating these games, as soon as the game over, they go run in the back cave, sneak out the back door, and they don't have to answer for any of their crimes. Right. And they got a police escort. At least in the NBA they do. To where? To the locker room. Oh, to, yeah. Well, that I mean, all right. Answer for your crimes, NBA! Especially you, Ed Malloy. Wow. I to be personal, I don't think you should know the officials' names. You know a lot that's, in the NBA. That's but usually a bad thing. Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't know any hockey officials. Tony Brothers. Tony Brothers. David Guthrie. Oh, the only guy we used to know in uh in uh football is uh old guns, hockey. Hockey. His son's there now. Yep. He wearing that tight ass shirt too. <laughs> and the black dude, the black dude always um 
He does a lot of the big games. I can't think of his name right now. College games? Huh? The college games? No. I'm talking about... uh. Remember, who, you know, I, I was a big Mike Carey guy. Loved Mike Carey. Yeah, Mike Carey, he, yeah. but not him. He wasn't he, good on TV, though. Yeah. They, tried no. to, they tried to make him like that Pereira. Hey, it didn't work out. You know who my favorite, uh, my favorite fight referee is? Oh, uh, Steve the, Willis? The guy gets, he, hey, he gets in there. He's like, he look, he's in there like this, and the dude will get hit, and he'll go. Ooh. <laughs> like, All right, we'll take a break. Back with more after this. Football Friday.
Stop so, Leroy. So me and Stunt Steve was over there, and we was talking about Reggie White, and he pulled up the play where he did the old hump move on Reggie White. Let me tell you something. I sent it in the group chat. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Like, you're like, oh, my goodness. Strongest person in the world. In the world. Don't even look strong. He, like, just. That was all Leroy's fault. No, man. Come on. Like, people get mad. Like, you got mad at me. You can't. Hey, you can't cut Reggie. I'm just supposed to let him blow me up? And he's, he's, I say, he's, first of all. He'd say Bible verses, huh? You see what he did to Big K. What do you think he going to do to me? I ain't. No, dude. He. Let me tell you something. Everybody that know Reggie, he don't cuss, he pray. I don't like that. And praying's worse. I don't like that. Because then they think they got Jesus with them. I remember when- uh, They could go, just go crazy. Terrifying. I remember yeah. when uh, Thug Rose did that to Yon and Jacek at the weigh-in, and she was singing, she was saying the Our Father, knocked her ass out. Oh, no. Scary. Hey. That was the end of her, basically. Basically. Yeah, it was. She was the boogie woman. <laughs> that was her name. She would butcher people's faces, but then, like, because there were no, you know, it's a lot like Ronda Rousey. Like, nobody was fighting at 115 pounds. And then, uh, you know, that division's awesome now. Like, you know, her. Think about this. You have guys that are fighting seven pounds heavier than them. That's right. Tomorrow night, quadrilogy. quadrilogy. You don't want to watch the flyweight championship? Davidson Figueiredo, Brandon Moreno. It's a good fight, dude. I read, 20, the, I read the I've read the scene I'm on my horse in the third. 75 minutes together in the octagon. This this could be a hundred. Could be. They've been so three fights. Four, yeah, no. This is the fourth one. Fourth fight. This is the fourth, fourth fight. fight. Man. I love the way they do this. Talk about players. What are you doing? Just looking at him. Little Coward. Skip Bayless. That sounds uh, oh, is is Colin Little Skip Bayless? Yeah. I just, think Colin's actually a lot taller than Skip Bayless. He is, but he's actually not he's not short, dude. No, he's not. He's like but, six two. But but the thing is, is that they get to a point in their career where they think they can literally say anything. Right? That's the hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want people to be upset with me. Ah, but I think. You know, that's pretty like good say, Jason Kelsey says Jalen Hurts is humble, but not a killer. That's uh, interesting. Okay. I could also say it about Patrick Mahomes, who might be one of the most laid back, right? Casual guys out there. He throws the ball like a loaf of bread. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like, what does that mean? Who's I never. Killer? Wait, guess what? I never got in a fight during the game. Does that mean I wasn't a killer? Not a killer, dude. Sorry. Right. I would help guys up. Right? I mean, who's the meanest uh center out there? Is that like if if I if I am going Michael Dieter? If I'm going on a if, oh, I, if if there's a fight to be had and I have to pull a center, I'm taking Steve Everett. Birds also called J Fig the boogie woman, according to Schmeathan. <laughs> the boogie woman. Point for <laughs> Twitter. I just accept accept everything at this point. Like I feel, I feel like I should uh I should check on that hawk. See, see how the hawk is doing. I thought you were gonna do that yesterday. You didn't. Well, call. here's what here's the problem with that. Why you hurt him, Jennifer? If the hawk, if the hawk is not capable of being at a certain place at a certain time, yeah, they're gonna off the bird. Think so. Yeah, because you can't like keep a hawk as like a pet, right? Why not? Well, it's an animal sanctuary. Like they got a bunch. They got otters. You know, they got some some spoon bills. Otters. Yeah, otters, dude. I don't know who brought them the otters. Like, imagine like finding. Who, who finds I'm, kinda, a... I'm kind of surprised you didn't keep the hawk. Why? Why would I keep a hawk? Why would I, you? Because it's that? you. I kept a squirrel. Exactly. <laughs> I think that was like forced upon you. Was that? Ricky. Hawks are scary, dude. Yes, it was forced upon. This me. guy's this guy's weapons were not to be trifled with. Because I put because I I asked Mima to put it in a box and she put it in a box to bury it and I'm like no no it's alive. I can't believe. I'm you glad you kept breaking for a long time. Uh -huh. By the yeah. way, happy birthday uh, also to Tyler Hero today. 23 years old for Boy Wonder. Woo, 
23, two 23. Kids. You know what that means? What? You need some buckets tonight, dude. Some buckets for your birthday. I don't see. Why do you do that? Can I ask you a question? What? Why do you do that with players? What do you mean? Like, you determine success or failure based on how many points they score. I'm not saying that. And I would say, that. if Tyler Hero scores 10 points, but somebody else scores 40, that's why he only scored 10 points. Listen, he said Don't he, then turn around and say, I need you to score more points. Listen, he's the one who said he's in the same class as Luca. okay? Okay. So go out there. You outscore Luca tonight. Or else he's going to trade you here, for Luka. Think about this. I do believe this. There's three or four guys on this team that if given the number of shots could go 35, 40 points. For sure. But they don't play that way. So it's hard for me to go back when one guy scores 30 and look at the other three guys and say, we need more out I mean, of you. Bam did it three straight games. It hadn't been done since LeBron, three straight 30-point games. That's kind of crazy. Mm, I'm surprised you mentioned his name. What? I've always said he's a good player. <sighs> he's not looking at you. He hasn't looked at me all show. Because. And you know what? I'm a little hurt. Why? Because you know what? You don't you don't respect my eyes. No, you got the smirk. <laughs> That's the smirk that almost got us fired. That was a long time ago. Still was etched in my memory. That little grin right there. She doesn't work there anymore, does she? Is it know. Google's lady? Yeah. Are, it's are. like I was telling Leroy, you do the Larry Merchant. <laughs> Oh, I remember dude. that. That was so good. <laughs> if I was 50 years younger, Floyd, I would have kicked your ass. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Have been. Like, if you see it, nobody can touch me. You think you were going to get in the ring? Yeah, you're going to, you're, what are you going to do? Are you going to, you going to hit him with a two by four when he's not looking? <laughs> like, how is that going to happen, Larry? Ooh, epic stuff, Chris. What? I'll give you that. You haven't checked out yet. You ate like at 10 a.m. this morning. He hasn't. He, he hasn't checked out. He's so actually crust. been. He's been. He's, been, yeah, he's watching Papa John's commercial. He's been very right peppy now. this Friday. Yeah. Very peppy. I'm I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm looking forward, looking forward to, to, to the UFC tomorrow. Come on, dude. It's, uh, two title fights. It, it'll probably be on right after the last game. So, right. Yeah. Right. All right. I think it's going to be a good main event. Yeah. Jamal Hill can crack. Glover Chair, old as hell, but still a good fighter. I mean, he. I mean, even in the, the the promo shot, he looks old. He's old. Usually, they try to at least make you look a little. You want to know how old he is? He's Chuck Liddell's protege. Like that's how old he is. Like Chuck Liddell came up. He's like, this is the next guy. Chuck Liddell ain't fought in forever. Is that like me saying Jim Harbaugh was my quarterback in college? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but only for one year. Also, a random thing is that he trains in Danbury, Connecticut. Who trains there? Glover Teixeira. His name is Glover. Glover, yeah. Wow. Looks like Glover, but it's Glover. I've been calling him Glover all these years. I mean, because you know why? Because we know uh what's the dude from uh Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks like Glover, but it's Glover. Is he not American? He's Brazilian. Okay. Then, then, That's then. why he's in the main event. In Rio. Uh, and then you got another Brazilian, Davidson Figueiredo. Taking on Brandon Moreno, who's Mexican. And then you got Gilbert Burns, also Brazilian, taking on Neil Magny. I like the way they did that. That's yep. a nice, you know, bring all your people back. Bringing the people back, dude. Yeah. Bringing yeah. them back. It's been a while since they've been in, in Brazil, right? They the the you know what Brazil Brazil was the last card before pandemic. Before the pandemic, and they had to close it down. Like they weren't allowed to bring in fans. Oh. Then so it's been since so then, it's, we're talking three years and and here's listen Dana UFC the state of Florida is tired of being your side chick right when everything goes wrong right Tell when them. you can't find uh, an arena you go you know what let's go to Florida dude and I tell you one oldie but goodie you want to know what's even more annoying they hate South Florida we though. can't even get a card we're not even getting a swipe on Tinder really yeah man where's our card. Oh, Where's know. my car, Dana? And you even question him. Where the hell? Well, by the way, did you watch this power slap? Did you watch any of this? You watched it? Not many people did. According really? to the ratings. Really? Yeah, dude. This I I got it's on TBS. Who the hell has TBS? I got to tell you, it's regular. No, man. Here, <laughs> everybody got it. Stay I watch. I watch TBS all the time. Do you? 
Yeah, watch. That's why I get to watch all my my older shows. Right. So uh, right now I'm watching Lucifer. Wow. Right. Watch some Bones. That guy does commercials. I Bones love don't, that show. Bones doesn't come on there no more. What? Bones no. always came on before he played. Right. Game. No. 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 Now it's Lucifer. It's NCIS New Orleans. Charmed. Um. Charmed is early morning, right? I used to watch um, Castle. I love that show. I watched all that show. Castle. Rizzoli and Isles. Yeah, Rizzoli and Isles. That's uh, and Angie Harmon. Isn't she married to Jason Seahorn? Yes. Um, she has a... I have to be careful with, mm-hmm. with women like that. She has a deeper voice than me. <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah. But I watch I watch uh, TBS all the time. TBS, TNT, I get it all going crack a lack. Now we'll I will Power tell you, Slap next week. they can know. do they can do better with their movie selection. You know what? I'm telling you what, if I turn on that damn TV and see the Meg, or uh, or, or or see um, they they're big on showing all of the the Jurassic World and all that. Like uh, enough. And then you know what I hate? Here's what I hate. Can I ask you why a television channel will do a commercial and say world premiere with a movie that has been on every other station? I have no idea. They do it all the time. World premiere, Rocky. I'm like, yo, like, like, like they do it. Like, it was a movie. So world like, premiere. Oh, all I man. know is that the Rockies on. You're gonna get all five of them. No, oh, that's on that's um, right. History Channel. Right now, it's on Netflix. You get all if, five. If of them. you go, if you go to um, wait, let me see. It's either History or uh, I forgot the one that's right after History. It good, but knock, um, knock. it's uh, it's one one nine on uh, on uh, AT and T or one one eight one 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 nine. That right there, they show all the old Rocky movies. Um. And then if you go to eleven twenty nine, that's where you get all your John Wicks. They showed the hell out of some John Wick one, two, and three, and uh, Jack Reacher. I thought you're not a. Uh, I thought you're not a, a Keanu guy. Oh, I keep it moving. Oh, I'm just saying, it's just <laughs> like it's on there. Like Keanu, Re- Keanu Re- is that the guy. Same guy in every movie, right? Whether it's funny, whether it's uh, serious. Um. Yeah. All right. We'll take a quick break. You guys can text us at three zero five five six seven zero five sixty. Back with more after this.
Yeah. No cap. No rap cap. I took the top off. I'm dripping like hot sauce. Welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy. Great text. I got to give this guy a point. <laughs> Gabe Vincent kept Trey Young as a pet. He's a hawk. That's true. He hey, he made him shout pineapple, dude. That's a great point by that texter. Did Marcos get rid of the point for texter button? He might have. Uh, you know what? I, I mean, you know, he, I'm sorry, texter. He's got webbed hands. What do you want me to do? Where is he? He's in Seattle. I think Seattle or Portland. He's he, somewhere in the northwest. He looks like he's finding a yeti. Like that's what he's he's out for doing. He's somewhere in the mountains, actually. He, he is, is a yeti. yeti. Yeah. Another guy says, uh, why is your show the only show I have to hit back to live after every damn commercial? Is that because of stupid Twitch? I don't know, dude. I don't think so. I think that might be an app thing. I'll 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 write a ticket and look into it. Let's tell you. You can watch us on YouTube though, if you want to watch our ugly mugs. We are now streaming live on YouTube as well. Uh 560 WQAM. Jason Jackson. Uh he joined us earlier in the show. If you guys missed it, he will uh will bring that to you. He had some great stuff, especially on uh a potential return of Big Yurt, which I'm excited about. How many uh, model shots do you think we got from Big Yurt when he comes back, JFig? Hmm. Too a many lot. for you to handle. That's right. <laughs> he is handsome. Handsome. It's a very I handsome. Mean, he team. got he got me excited to have Big Yurt back soon. So I'm looking you think about Big Yurt, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent. Handsome, handsome ass team on the. And you got Pat Riley atop the organization. A lot of handsome devils on the heat. Just the Vex. Thank you. Oh, hey, what's up, Leroy? So anyway, all I'm saying tonight, Tyler, is if you really want to celebrate your birthday, you go out there and you outscore Luka Doncic, all right? You don't let him outscore you on your birthday, all right? It's Boy Wonder's birthday, not Luka's birthday. Oh, Luka this, Luka that, Luka, Luka, Luka. But I'm going to be watching him tonight, too. Let's see if he's going to be making a stink. Check on that Mark Cuban. Uh, I'll have you know, Leroy, he was not talking about this before you got here. He's Why doing this. Stink? He's doing this just to get under your skin. I know. This is I ridiculous. Know. Especially I after I try to have a conversation with him <laughs> about why you shouldn't get caught up in how many points guys score. Because if Jimmy scores 40, you don't need Tyler or Bam or one of those guys to also score 30 or 40. This is a great question. Great question for Leroy mm. on the text line. It's a great question. No, no, no. Don't get upset. Hey, Leroy, if you could only save one rat from a sinking ship and it's between Victor Oladipo and Christian Wilkins, who are you saving? Wow. I feel like that's an easy one. Uh, I'll probably save Christian Wilkins. Wow. wow. I Same thought you were going to go for a little I got you. All but right. you know, that, come on. From the beginning of time, I have been on Victor Oladipo. Well, he's always been I one of my I guess not. Players. Mark the tape. Yeah, but it's only. But it's football. I told you. Same got, sport. There's only one number one, J-Fig. What if it's between me and Christian Wilkins? Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Same job right now, huh? No, no I was, Barry, here's the problem. Here's the problem. If I threw the line in to Christian Wilkins, he would jump on the boat and be grateful, right? If I threw the line in to you, you would be like, are there any snacks? Like you, there'd be a question there before you grab the rope. No, I think that's more something you would say. Where the snacks? Really? Solomon Grimm says Leroy would be the one who pushes him off the boat. Who? <laughs> no, I wouldn't push him off Point the boat. For I would never listen. See, here's the problem. Here's the thing I get caught in. I get caught in a situation where he eggs me on, right? He does things to get at me. And then I hold them accountable, and everybody gets, you know. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead, say it. Hard to say. That's what I should have answered. 
if it was between you, it was between uh, Tobin and Christian Wilkins. Hard to say. Did you see that uh, Joe Mixon is upset that the uh, NFL is selling tickets for this neutral site game already between the Chiefs and the Ben, the uh, the Bills? Because it's only neutral if it's that, if that's the matchup. They have to. But he he finds it disrespectful. And use it. I like it. But wait, 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 wait. It's no different than your team selling playoff tickets for all the playoffs they could possibly have before the playoffs start. Man. Right? Every team does it. The the Heat do it. Everybody does it. Last playoff book I had was the 03 Marlins playoff book. That was good. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I went to I went every to, game. Was that against the Indians? No, that was against um, no, I the, went to the, uh, the It was the Yankees, Cubs, Yankees. and the Giants. Okay. Um, I went to the one ninety seven. Did you in Cleveland? All of them, pretty much. You were a season ticket holder, right? Yeah. Who were you? Uh, did you share an agent with Kenny Lofton? Ken Lofton, yeah. Yep, that was a good. That was a fun. Time. But I also here's the deal. I, me and Kenny Lofton traded season tickets, so he got two tickets to the Browns, and I got tickets to um the playoffs. That's pretty cool. Um, and then. I want to say um, I knew Albert Bell from college. I knew Albert Bell when he was at LSU. And I took a recruit trip up there because I was going to play baseball. So I met him there. His name was Joey at the time. You were going to play baseball at LSU? Yeah. I was going to play baseball at Michigan. You were? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought you were rats off a ship. No. I was rats off a ship when I realized that football might be the way. What do you think you would have done these days, though, when you see three hundred million dollar contracts? Do you think you still would have gotten football, <sighs> or you don't think you were going to? No, baseball? but here's the problem with baseball: everybody sees those three hundred million dollar contracts, but you don't realize that it takes forever. It takes forever, right? Yeah, like, like uh, JJ Bleda was all everything. That was the Kyler Murray argument, right? Like everybody was saying, "Why would you go to football?" Right, and odds are he's going to make more money in football, right? Because he already got the contract. Yep. He already got that contract that takes you seven or eight years to get in baseball. Yep. Um, so, and and I just, I like the action of football, but I love baseball. I, I love the, the just the excitement of anything could happen on any play. When that's not the case in baseball, because sometimes you play a game and the pitcher's picking – corners and he's getting those corners so it's going to be a low scoring game because half of the balls you can't even reach right it's just one of those things so when did you get to michigan and you decided no baseball like first practice first base first football um probably after my first semester like i was like dude i can't do all this well it wasn't that it was like dude i went up there with no money right um i was exhausted i was doing school and every class when you play football at michigan all your classes have to be done have to be done by one o'clock so every day every class my first two years started at eight in the morning god i could never right i'm thinking back to my first biology class that was at eight in the morning overslept my first lab failed it because i went and partied the night before right like broadcast major every class was at 6 p.m that is very true. <laughs> it's awesome. But that's so that was, you know, it, it was tough. It was tough. So I was like, you know what? I was getting banged up. You know, in, in college, they don't protect the young guys. They don't protect the guys they ain't playing. Mm. We used to scrimmage on Mondays. Full game time situation. You came from an, a uh caveman time, my friend. That's uh that's that but see, I don't I don't necessarily think that it was caveman time. I think the methods in which they went about trying to get you into the mindset to play football was a little different, mm-hmm. right? And now we just assume that a guy is going to be tough. We just assume that a guy is going to make tackles. We just assume that a guy is going to run physical. We assume all these things. And back then, they didn't ins- assume it. And now you're starting to get players that you assume these certain things, and they get in the game, and they can't do it. 
in high school, were you a uh, you, you, you pimp your home run shot, or were you uh you know? Dude, our baseball guy? team was terrible. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy smokes, it was so bad. We had we had a left hander hmm? play shortstop one game. No way! I swear to God. Wait, what? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's crazy. We only had like 12, 13 guys. And, huh. and he was the and, only one good enough to, to field over there. I ran, mean, out, ran out of players. It was it wasn't even that. We had <laughs> we we mysteriously didn't have any shortstops, but we had two first basemen hmm. that could actually catch ground balls. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> left hand to shortstop. That's now crazy. it was only for one game. But still. it still looked ridiculous. We were like one of the one of the guys who ended up. I wonder like, if that's ever happened in baseball history. I wonder he, if there's ever been a lefty to play shortstop in the majors. We have one guy who ended up going somewhere, going to college and playing the minor league system. And I just remember him that day doing, What are we doing? This is a clown show. Nobody's gonna take us serious. We got a left-handed shortstop. <laughs> like it was. Uh, but I did this and how about this? Yeah. I used to so. I would um, leave school, go to a track meet, bring my baseball uniform with me, change on the bus, and the whole track team would drop me off at the baseball game on the way back. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. We'll take a quick break. Get you caught up with your headlines. Back more of this.
All right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you on a Friday. We on a paper chase. Remain in the G. I don't know the words, but exactly. that's 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 New Orleans music right there. Liv is uh, going to be broadcasting the CW. That's where they ended up. The CW. Coming the CW. up. Coming up. Live Golf and Arrow. Isn't that like uh, Riverdale? Basically. <laughs> Basically, basically, but CW is like what uh, NBC two. It used yeah. to be the WB back in the day. All right, but isn't it like it's NBC two, right? So it's like, right? They can't even put it on their main station. How about this? This is a remember Dan Dockich. He he got into it with a uh, Sedano one time over Eric Spoelstra. Well, that is so debatable. You know, whatever. Where's Nate McMillan now? Where is he? Yeah, Nate McMillan. Spo got him fired, which he probably felt bad about because I remember Spo was upset because he you know, didn't have his players. But still, he fired him, Spo. I don't know what to tell you. It's always a good song and dance Spo can put out there. Like, oh, how could you fire this guy? Eh, you did it. You were the assassin. Anyway, uh, he has this story where he says, my sources inside the Colts got this today. Uh, Josh McDaniels, do you remember that he was going to be the Colts head coach? Remember that? Correct. And uh, according to him, McDaniels' wife made him pull the plug after having Ursay stay in their home in Massachusetts and observing his odd behavior, behavior that included being in McDaniels' family bathroom for a very long and awkward period of time. We know what's going on in that bathroom. Maybe he was playing Fruit Ninja <laughs> on his phone. <laughs> you know, you are... I read a lot of exhilarating articles on on the canon. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's probably why I can't go in public. I mean, yeah, but he's also the guy that was found with, you know. Hey, the, but the, here's the deal. You can't go to other people's house and... And what is Jim Irsay doing staying at their house? Because he was... Maybe he was croutin. Or you lose stay in you, 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 I, when Bo came and recruited me from Michigan, I didn't ask him if he wanted a sleepover. <laughs> do, we, do you not? Do we not understand how ridiculous that sounds? Your employee came over to take a nap. What the hell's wrong with that? Don't even make sense. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Wait, he was like, "Hey, uh, so you don't believe you want to go in the interview? Yeah, why don't you come over? We'll eat some dinner. You can sleep here." No. I mean, I'm sure Josh McDaniels had a really nice house. So what? How many employers or future employers you know go and take a nap at the person they want to hire? You don't think that's that... ridiculous? No, the not more I talk it. about, the more I talk about, it, the more ridiculous. <laughs> You're clearing Jim Ursay. So let me ask you a question. So <laughs> we had an owner that flew out to San Francisco, right, to get a coach. Did he take any naps at the people's house? I don't know. He got on his plane and brought his ass back here, and then he had to give his current coach a raise because he probably shouldn't have been having that conversation and breaking bread in San Francisco. Theoretically. There is no theoretical. Like, theoretically, Stephen no Ross, sense. when he was trying you, to wait, get Jim, could Jim you imagine? Could you imagine um, Claudia mm -hmm. saying, yeah, Leroy, we want to talk about an uh, extension. I'm saying, yeah. Come on over. You you know, you can just stay at my house. <laughs> right? Do you want? Let's put that in its proper perspective. That sounds ridiculous. And then the guy ends up coaching somewhere else? That's right. Well, Yo, that's, then clearly. Well, that's the rumor. The rumor clearly is. Clearly, y'all relationship wasn't that good. But that's the thing. For, the, the rumor is the wife found it uncomfortable. If he was sleeping over there, he could poop as long as he wants. Well, and, and let me it says it, well, it doesn't say he stayed over. It just says that they were having him over. So they could have just had him okay. over for dinner. They could have had him over for dinner. Correct. Correct. Well, I'm going to say this. Nobody else will say it, but I'm going to say it. Maybe he had a little reaction to your food. Wow. This is crazy. This you is know? just re all the things going on in the sporting world. Think of all. We have divisional playoffs this weekend. This is probably one of the most exciting weeks of football <laughs> all year. Next to Super Bowl and opening weekend. And what are we talking about? 
Jim Mercy taking a dump at somebody's house. I don't know that he took a dump. Maybe he was doing some things. He was found with some paraphernalia before. That wasn't, dude. Let's just be clear. Hmm? If I got stopped on the road <laughs> with what he had in the car, I'm going directly to jail. Do not pass go. No explanations. <laughs> nothing. And they're going to charge me with dis- distribution and the sale of narcotics. Okay? Let's, that, that's a fact. That's a fact. Because if you say it's for personal use and you got a thousand pills and a whole bunch of cash, all that means to me is you had some left over when you bought it. Yeah, come over here. You got to see Lucas' father. <laughs> oh, my God. He looks like Mr. Incredible. I hope he's at the game tonight. I want to watch him. Luka Doncic's father? Yeah, yeah. He looks like Mr. Incredible. He really does. Wow. Right. That is amazing. Sorry for your radio so, yeah. audience. So, yeah. First, first of all, okay. That's, I'm sorry I ruined uh, Divisional Round Weekend with uh, that's Thursday ridiculous. Poop Talk. That's ridiculous. It is from Dan Dockich. It's Okay. Oh, wow, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys really going to sit here and say you believe this story? Uh, well, Tell the story to yourself. If I came to you yep. and told you that story, I don't know if – look, I, I'm wondering. Let's say – Wondering? Let's say that we have a situation, okay? Let's say they want sure. to take the Tobin and Leroy show, put us national, all right? Okay. And the head of Disney comes over to our – over to your establishment. I imagine you're going to probably be the one, you know, cooking. Yeah. And he – is gone in the bathroom for a very long time. Uh-huh. Now, you have a very big house. So, I mean, I don't feel like we're going to get the protruding uh, issue of it. Right. Do you feel like that could be weird enough for Big Spoon to pull the plug? No. I don't think so either. Maybe you're right. No. I mean, well, listen. First of all, it's really amazing to me that people can all of a sudden act like their body isn't capable of doing that, too. <laughs> like, you... Who's to say dude, at no point in her life she never had the bubble guts and had to had to go and sit in the bathroom for a long period of time? It's happened to all of us. She'd be the ghost national. They won't even do the show a remote from Lou Backro Chevrolet. <laughs> point <laughs> four. It's not wrong. Witcher. We used to do a lot of remotes. I know. Then mysteriously, they sent it to the A team and we got delegated to a lesser uh conference. That's right. And half Lesser that eight, division. Half that eight team's never there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luka Doncic, that looking like the incredible. Huh. You kind of built like that too. I've heard. Big old upper body, little skinny I've heard legs. Grew. I've heard uh Mr. Incredible. I've heard it yeah. all. Yeah. Grew? Grew. Grew. That's what I call him. Grew. <laughs> Come on, Steven. You have had to heard that. I'm not gonna lie, Luka Doncic's father looks like he could be my father. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hello. Does he look like your father? Uh, he doesn't look like my father. He c- has some resemblance to my grandfather. I can see it. Do you guys be related? I've always felt a very strong connection to the Slovenians. Minus one. <laughs> what? It's not fair. <laughs> Minus one. Let's get a uh, weather update from the Devesman and Dover uh... Law Firm. Your attorneys.com. Free consultations 24-7. Call at 866-954-4. It is clouding up a little bit. Little some overcast. It doesn't look like rain clouds. Winds coming out of the east, very light. And I would say it's 83 degrees. 83 degrees. Uh nice day. It's not humid, so that 83 doesn't feel like 83. Wow, look at how old Eric Mangini looks. He does look old. Even old, he looks stiff. What was he at Cleveland for you? Um, him and Scott Pioli, we we like to call. They were gophers? The gophers. <laughs> yep. Like, they were hold up the cards during during the uh, scout team. Um, when you If you left your playbook, you yell, Scott or Eric, they would run, get it for you. You know, stuff like that. But but I will say, um, like, so was Jim Schwartz. Yep. So was. I love that. I showed you. I said that story the other day. I love that Keenan McCardle's getting uh, yeah. an interview with the Patriots. How about this? So, Keenan McCardle. 
Bill would would bring him in, and then when we needed to make changes, Keenan was always one of the first ones to go. And then he would go to, like, Washington or somewhere, have a bunch of catches, and then at the end of the year, he'd be back on the team. Hmm. And he did this every year until the expansion draft where he went to Jacksonville and then balled out. Balled out. He was one of those guys. He didn't have a lot of speed and didn't really separate a lot, but everybody, he always caught the ball. Perfect. So everybody says, Smith oh, he don't have the, he don't have the, uh, you know, the, this, this uh, skill set to be able to do, it. but all he did was catch the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Luca. My brate. Will you stop? <laughs> That's what we need. Can we get Houston? Get Houston what? For the linebackers. Justin Houston? Justin Houston. I don't know how much he's going to get. I know. I mean, I don't mean we need somebody like him. We don't need him. We already got too many problems. This is where you really should be taking advantage of your youth. What do you mean? When you don't have to pay everybody. Right? Yes. This is where you should be taking advantage of your youth. Well, they got to have a really young team. Yeah. They got to pay Christian Wilkins. Yep. They don't have to pay uh, Jalen Waddle yet. Nope. They don't have to pay Jalen Phillips yet. Nope. They're not going to have to pay Austin Jackson. Dude. Or Lee Mike and Bird. Lucky to have a job. Be worried about getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got uh, come Free back. Agent. That ain't the worst thing to happen. We'll play a little. You're dead to me. Next. AM5.
you're dead to me. All right. Time to play our favorite Friday game. <laughs> you're dead to me. <laughs> you're dead to me. <laughs> uh, we'll get to this. Y'all remember Wait. when that th- – this is no lie. They broke into – Regular television, world to premiere, Real world, world premiere? premiere to play this Not video. CBS world premiere. No, ABC, CBS, NBC all played this video. It was like the original was like twenty five minutes. Hmm. He was the only person that I knew he because he also had a premiere when he did the video with Janet Jackson. Scream, is it Scream? Um, because that was the supposedly the first million dollar video. Music video. So tonight, the Miami Heat back in action against the Dallas Mavericks. 730, by the way. I've been saying 8. It's 730 tonight. So that's a uh, 7 o'clock pregame on Bally Sports. And uh, we got a little Solana sizzle later. What is that? 615? No, no, no. No. 645. 645. No. Got a little sizzle. 615. 615? Yeah. Hour and 15 minutes. So. Uh. You got our six fifteen oh, they, pregame. They're trying, show. To, they're trying to get this pregame like uh getting that dolphins. Pre-game. Yep. Yep. So uh that's your action tonight. Heat we and we start the pregame on Sunday for the, the first home game for the Dolphins next year. That's right. We're counting down. <laughs> but um person who's dead to me, not a person. Mark Cuban's face. I don't like it. I haven't liked it. It makes me uncomfortable. And it's a lying face. Bum. For me, I see this face. Uh, it's dead to me. You're calling somebody else lying face. Dude, he lies all the time. I feel like he's been dead to you for a while, though. No, no, no. no. Just his face, though. Like, they're going to show that face. That I'm, oh, I'm not even going to look at the screen. He's distinguishing now party parts. Yeah, of course. I don't want to say the entire, but he's got a family. I the whole person's got to be dead to me. Although I did, you know, do that to Paul Maurice last week. But Mark Cuban's face. You're dead to me, dude. I I, I just I can't with that You're face whining, crying. Oh, look, look at this. Look, look, look at that. I man. hate Dwayne Wade. I hate Dwayne Wade. It was a fixed finals. Boo. Get over it, dude. I'm done with your face. Dead to me. Leroy. So <clears throat> I normally don't like to pick on kids. Oh boy. But here we go. <laughs> I was picking my daughter up from school yesterday. And there's 3,000 kids. 3,000 plus kids go to school, so it's a little crowded. You get into the, the line. You pick up your kid. You keep it moving, going around. And then you get to the little avenues. Somebody lets you go. You get to the next opening. You let somebody else go. Blah, 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 blah. So it, it works perfect every day. Yesterday, somebody tries to tailgate on the person that I'm allowing to go and try to go two That's instead right. of one. That's ridiculous. And so I put my hand out of the window and say, no, no, no. You know how this goes. Right? She yells some explicatives at me because I wouldn't let her go and I sped up and got where she couldn't go into which I replied some things that I probably may or may not regret regret. I threatened to beat up her boyfriend with her (laughs) Um, uh, (laughs) because he chimed in because listen in the history of the world more men have gotten their ass kicked protecting the honor of their woman but I was just trying to warn him while he trying to show how tough he is with the missus that he riding with. He going to get a beat down coming up over here with that nonsense. Wow. So I expressed it in a couple of select These kids go to the school or they to my to- daughter's school. Oh. My, yo, she's she's ducked down in the back. She's out. <laughs> she, don't wanna, she don't want nothing to do. She don't she don't want nothing to do with this. But all the other people behind me are applauding. Oh, yes. Yes, because these snot nosed kids think they can do whatever. So whoever that is, you're dead to me. Wow. I don't like. And the boyfriend. Oh, especially him. Package deal. Because 
if you know you're dead to me, that boy. your significant other is wrong and you try to defend them and you get the beat down because you a male and she not, man, that's a tough road right there. That ruins relationships right there. Because you know any guy that's ran up to protect their girl and got a two-piece in, in the soda, you can't show your face around town no more. Jennifer, what do you have for us today? I want to follow you around just for one day. It's you can see everything hey, you encounter. Yeah, fun. Daily vlog. Yeah. You know, it should be like a once a week thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my dead to me is going to go to these influencers on TikTok who like giving oh. you life hacks oh, and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Thing. Let me tell you, I kind of did one of them. But let's just say my heart was in the right place. Uh-oh. What did you do? Which one was it? Minus I, one. I was almost the reason why my aunt's kitchen sink almost broke or something. Oh, God. What did you do? I'm not going to. I'm just not going to repeat what happened. But I was trying to help her do something a lot easier. And then I was like, oh, I remember something from, uh, from the TikTok? video they sent me. Yeah, like mm -hmm. a TikTok video or whatever. And it didn't go so well. And it almost caused mm -hmm. severe damage to a kitchen that's not even mine. So mm -hmm. I... You're dead to me. Was this I'm like trying to put garbage disposal? Something like that, yeah. Oh, boy. Sounds like your aunt's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that you, she, so, sounds your like aunt you're dead. <laughs> dead your no, aunt. my aunt was that. laughing and she's like, I cannot believe I listened to you. And you tried to do one of those, like, uh, put a lemon in your disposal, huh? Something like that. No, 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 no. no. All right. Clearly, it's extremely oh, yeah. embarrassing, it's embarrassing. It's because embarrassing. she ain't even talking about it. <laughs> Doesn't want to give the details. Fair enough. Right. Fair I enough. don't think I should, but you know uh, what? All that TikTok his... stuff, you dead to me. Kendrick Perkins giving his thoughts on Heat and uh, Mavs tonight. Contract bowl. Contract bowl. All right. Oh, who cares? <laughs> Stun Steve, what do you got for you dead to me? I'm um, thinking of this one on the fly, but I guess I'm going to have to go with uh, Tony Romo. Wow. Not that I ever really cared for you, but after, after Sunday's game, you're dead to me. He really was bad. Speaking to Toby. And he's going to do it again this week. Oh, I mean, he's got Buffalo game he's got again. Buffalo yes. again. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, no. I promise you. If it's a choice between Josh Allen and Joe Burrow, the love for Joe Burrow far and exceeds that of Josh Allen. No, oh, Jim. Hey, everybody. At least Joe Burrow's been to a Super Bowl. Did you guys see, by the way, uh, did you see that Joe Namath came out and uh, gave the Jets his blessing if Aaron Rodgers would come to the Jets to wear number 12? Who? What? Yep. He did the anti-Theisman. You know what I like? Here's what I love. I love when people do things or say things <laughs> Nobody asked for that gives you the indication that you're there, but nobody else thinks that. You think the Jets fans, if Aaron Rodgers said, I'll come to Green. I'll come to New York if I can wear my number. You think they are gonna ask for the approval of Joe Namath? Have to. You have to. No, they're not. Of course you do. People want to do that. Remember when people want to do that with Tua? Would uh, would Dan Marino give Tua his blessing to wear thirteen? I thought it was ridiculous. Why does Tua get to wear thirteen? I don't think that was a thing. I think those. Oh, it was a thing. It was dude. a thing in your head. It was a thing, dude. No, but here's here's what happens. You made that. You made that. We all made that up. Here's why. Hmm? Because when he gets here, here's what they tell him. What's available? Here's your available numbers. Okay? It's not like he comes in and says, ooh, can I have 13? He knows better. Players know better. So to say, oh, if you, if you, if you want to bring in Aaron Rodgers, I'll let him Aaron wear Rogers, my number. Aaron Rodgers, though, like he has uh, the qualifications where I would see Joe Namath being okay. Like, so you think Aaron Rodgers should get it no matter what? Yeah. Interesting. If if wait if Aaron so Rodgers Namath, if Aaron Rodgers said to the Jets, "I'll come there if I could wear my number," you know what the Jets gonna say? We'll work it out. Come on. Does anybody wear twelve for the Dolphins, or is that the Grease Man's? Greasy. So nobody's worn twelve. No. no. So if Tom Brady were to come here. 
Does he need the grease man's approval? I mean, if you can. Oh, no. What are you doing? Why are we doing this? I'm just curious. I just wanted to know. I just want to know. I want to know where we're at. I don't see. I don't care. I didn't care. I know you didn't care. Harold Harold had my number. And he wasn't going to even. He just said, here, you can have it if you want it. I'm like, no. Nope. Chuck Foreman. Stephen Ross goes to Greasy. Hey, you got to give Tom your number. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we get too caught up in that stuff. Right? Like, who, who cares? People care. I guess. TB12, it's his brand. Okay. Let me tell you, if people really want it, <laughs> you think Gilbert Burns would let Tom Brady wear 12? He really. Uh, he, I, I tell I was, you, what, I was taking. Can I just that. say something? Did he want Tom Brady? Can I just say Tom Brady? Yo, Gilbert, you're our guy. We love you. I lost a little bit. I lost just a little bit. He was laughing when about you it said last that. night. I was, he I lo- he because uh, I posted the video on Instagram. He was just he was he, he loved it. Right. I said, hey, I, love- I think we sold him on not doing it though. Yes. But I love yes. how he's just like, hmm. I got this crazy idea. <laughs> like, no, you like crazy. Like, like, yeah, I won't yeah, mention it again. Crazy idea is not losing a bunch of, bunch of weight and going to have a slugfest in the octagon. That's not crazy. His crazy idea is Tom Brady. Oh, come on, man. What are we doing? We Yeah, we recoiled when he said that, Steve. He goes, uh, uh, Tom Brady? He goes, what? No! No! Didn't like it. Gilbert Burns was great. If you guys missed it, I recommend going to our YouTube page. Go check it on out. 560 WQAM is where you guys can find that. Speaking it'll of, we got a big time match. Hmm? It'll also be in our newsletters that are coming out shortly. Ah. Direct link. There you there go. You go. Uh, we have a newsletter? Yeah, I, yeah. Know. I was just going to ask. I don't <laughs> a newsletter. I need to get that. You know we what? You should subscribe to them because that... I work really hard on them. How do I subscribe to Is it? that the same as the brief? I had the 790 newsletter, yes. but I, I don't, you know. Go don't have to anymore. our WQAM page and uh-huh. it'll be one of the first things to pop up to subscribe to. Make sure you put Leroy's birthday in there. All right. Does that I... that much information? We'll so that's do what I'm going to start best. doing. You know what? When I have a birthday, that whole day, I'm going to just do uh, 21 seconds. Oh, where do I go, Jay? 21. I see. 21. Uh, <laughs> we get it, just, dude. It's just a regular w- savage. Oh, I see. I see. I see. All right, here we go. There you go. You guys need my zip code, really? Seems a bit much. How about yeah, so they can track you. What, are we voting for the All Star team, <laughs> dude. No lie. Clearly not enough. You, to... We go, once my... once they asked me to sign up, I was like, I'm out. You know what my zip code is? Three 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 zero. Huh? You got too many numbers in your zip code. Well, uh, that's uh, that's what we're going to go. If you guys missed us, uh, Miss Jason Jackson on with us earlier. He was great. Talk some heat with him. Giving us Ask ready for Friday. Getting us ready for a little heat in Mavs. The Jack Show. He joins us next.
help. All right, 15 minutes to eat here for you on 560 WQAM. It's a Vice Shirt Friday. Yep. We're having some fun today. You know what it is with Jax, right? That's got Friday, dude. Yeah. We all know that. I wonder if he does it during the games, though. I don't know. Let's ask him, Leroy. You know what? We have the privilege of having the man and being able to go right to the source. We'll do some real journalism here. Let's go to the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop over 1,500 Toyota's indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood. On 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan, he is Jason Jackson. He is the voice of your Miami Heat right here on your flagship, 560 WQM. You, of course, can also catch the coverage uh, tonight as Heat and Mavericks get going. Bally Sports Sun, 730 is when their coverage gets going from the home of the Heat's first championship, American Airlines Center. Jax, how are you doing this morning? Is everything going good? Uh, how could it be bad? I'm here Whoa, with you. You're in witness time. protection, Jax. What are we doing? Why, you, why is it got to be all that? <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> That's my skin tone. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only Jacks. <laughs> uh, I stayed in the oven longer than me. Uh, what did you want to ask, Leroy? You wanted to ask what was still going on on Fridays? Are you still doing Ask on Fridays? Because you're in the different. You still watch television? Of course. You, I mean, like, you act like. Because I went to radio, there's no visuals or something. But no, there's visuals. That's why I, mean, yeah. I just asked. I, 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 just asked. We I did don't not. Get... I did not pack one. I will be honest. Hmm. Right, but we don't. We don't get to see you like we normally do. So I'm just wondering I if he still hour does for for a half hour, about an hour after for an hour. Okay, you got to commit to the whole television viewing experience. All right, Jax. I apologize. That's on Leroy. Me. My bad. My, it's on me, Jack. <laughs> no, I will be honest. For I will be honest, Billy Roy. On the road, it's rare. Okay. Because on the road, I'm only on for like maybe five minutes. Bro, okay. And I got so you. All right. The 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 ascot on the road. Uh, we're not gonna sit here and get my neck all hot for three hours. <laughs> you know, for two and a half minutes of television. I got and, you. And, and and listen, carrying the the load, and Tobin knows. When you're carrying the load of the Miami Heat audio experience, you got to have all your throat That's available. <laughs> how, like, how, let's and talk, last night, as you can. No, I was saying, Jack, let's talk about it. like how much have you enjoyed? This is your second year. You're oh. halfway through the second year. Like, how much have you enjoyed the new, yeah. the new responsibility of being the the radio voice? Like, have you have you dug it? Like, it, do you enjoy it more the second year than the first year? How much is how much have you liked getting into this? What I love is how many people like to jump in my Twitter feed and tell me how to do it. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, well, you know that's my favorite part. <laughs> that's it. And, and I have a unique style. I don't. I it, it, there's so many things that I wanted to be when Michael retired and the opportunity was presented to me, because I spent my entire life loving and listening to play-by-play guys, and you know what you wanted to sound like. And then you do it, and you realize, <laughs> holy hell, this game's really fast. <laughs> so you got to prune all that R&B singer, FM DJ stuff out of your throat. Like, that's got to go. Right. Like, it's literally watching. What was that? What's the film where they have to lighten the load of something, and they just keep throwing stuff out? And they got to take stuff off, and we got to go faster. We got to go faster. And they're just taking all the stuff I can't remember the flick off the top of my head. It'll come to me like 10 minutes from now. This is the joy of being 50 now. Pete. I feel like, is, is that, that like Anaconda where they're running from the snake? Oh, no, no. They were just, <laughs> it's got to be faster. It's got to be lighter. No, Anaconda. Oh, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I felt like Jaws was too said, obvious. Uh, hmm? I've, I've absolutely loved it. And, and it, it, listen, my first 17 years were awesome. But right. what I didn't realize being a, a, a host and reporter, which I had been my entire career mm -hmm. up until last season, is that with play-by-play, -play, uh, there's not a second of the game you're not locked into and engaged with. So you're, you got the traffic. We do it a little bit different. As, as, as B knows, you know, we, we do a multiple voice ensemble yep. type dynamic. Mm -hmm. And so not only am I traffic copping, calling the game, doing promos, doing sales items, uh, making sure we get to break in a relative, uh, relatively decent amount of time, pulling in an analyst on home games. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out how I want to say well, 
the secret sauce to Struce juice. Well, Jax, one of the things that people don't understand is you did the same thing with your radio show mm. that you included Absolutely. others mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. how I started doing it. I started doing yes, Fridays sir. and then Mondays. And so, uh, yeah, just hearing you include other people and other opinions is not nothing new right. to you. And people don't, people, yeah, man. I think you gotta, that's what you gotta be deep things. in the memory banks for all that. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. For the Friday foursome. Yep. All that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, do you find an extra level of tension no matter when it is going into Dallas? Do you get side eyes? Or is everybody just oh. grumpy because the heat walk in there? Because, you know, no love lost. I even said, I listen, I even said in New Orleans when I'm teasing the, the game coming up next, <laughs> we're, we're going to Dallas. Where we'll let them all know about 06 and we never talk about 11. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's I mean, it. So I have a ring. So I have a ring protocol. Mm -hmm. And each city in which we battle in one championship rings, uh, Oklahoma City, Dallas, and uh, of course, San Antonio, I wear those championship rings to those games, both in the arena and, and on the road. And so I come in with a really kind of a, a not so humble flex. I like it. Um, but both San Antonio and Dallas can show me theirs. That's true. So yeah. It's, it's, then, it's a different then. thing. You got to come in a little humble. I did go by the statue, the Dirk statue oh. last night. We we've been so we've been we on we on this one. D Wade D Wade need to have his statue. Where's D Wade's yeah, statue, well, Jack? That part of it, you, I, I'm gonna leave that for you all. You understand? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> we understand. Okay. But what I will say is that the Dirk one is frightening. Like it, it looked I, badass. I'm, I'm gonna probably be off on the proportions, and you guys look it up. It looks like it's 30 feet tall, <laughs> all right. And then the angle of his fadeaway is not humanly possible. And I don't remember him being parallel to the floor <laughs> upon release. It took I some, mean, he, listen, some, took, took some artistic shot. liberties with him. <laughs> Oh my lord! I think he lives in it. <laughs> he just <laughs> comes out. It's remarkable. Listen, kudos to to Cuban. And them they, they've they, they've done well with their greatest player in franchise history. Tonight, uh, this team does feel like it's wrong. It was nice to get a blowout. First of all, that was uh, a stress free oh, win. But how do you feel like it? it the, it's coming together, Jax. I really do feel like the team is playing a lot better. Nice to have everybody healthy, but like you, you, you know, on the road, you are there in the locker room. Does does the vibe seem more relaxed? Do they feel like more confident, more comfortable? What are you get, gauging from just the temperature of the team? Yeah, you, you're in the locker room a lot. Uh, B, it, it, it's it's solid. It, it, it stayed that way. It's been that way through these near fifty games. Uh, that's probably the astonishing part. That was the fifteenth time the intended lineup played together, and we're almost at game fifty. Fifteen. Right. Right. Uh, with, if that's how it's going to look, and, and listen, they're, they're missing two, they speaking of the Pelicans, no Ingram, no Williams. Feel free to bring them both on Sunday, 3.30. I want it all. Right. Uh, but that's how you deal with a team that's down two of their best players. Right. It's got to be, you know, it's 20, it's 26, or oh, it's 15. No, it's not. It's 20. Like, that's, that's exactly the realm you want to be in. Um, when they are using their defense, the way that they used it mm -hmm. was it almost 20 turnovers for, for 24 points. And then everything else comes from there. You're in trouble. That's, and they know that right. as a team, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, that's not mm -hmm. always how it works. That Atlanta game. I wouldn't put a gold star on Atlanta game because I think that's a nice mid season reminder of what are you playing around in these games for? Right. Right. What are you getting down 26 for? You know, you can come back, but once you use all that energy to come back, how do you get over the hump and stay over mm -hmm. the hump? Play like that. Come out, set the tone, cause havoc, make the other team go, oh, wait, we're at work. we right. got to get to work right now. Right. And just make that the way that you go about it as long as the the pixie dust of health is yeah. sprinkled on this team. I, I love I love the, the top nine. Like from, you know, that first five and then those, those next four and then, you know, whatever, whatever reserves you need after that. I, I like that group. I, I want that group now. And, and and pushing all the way to the uh, second season. You don't think um, that maybe a, a, another big would help? Or um, I heard they've been kicking around a couple of guys, and there's been some fodder. You mean like a seven footer? Yes, that, that has a nice jump shot. 
and re- offensive rebounds, like somebody like that. <laughs> There's no tree for it. That wears number seventy-seven. <laughs> that might be coming back in a few weeks. Be that oh, guy. is he coming? Is he is, like uh, the thing about injuries well, I mean, with listen, the Heat is the we have was, no idea. It was it was three months, mm-hmm. right? Right. So next month is the third month. He's going to need, and we're talking about Omer Yurt seven. Yeah. Yurt. He's going to need a month yeah. to get seven, back into seven. It. Yurt seven. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, let me tell you something. Get Silk Sonic on right now. Tell your boy to put Silk Sonic on. <laughs> seven, seven, seven. Let's go. That is the new song you all need to play every 15 minutes of heat. Because I can't wait. I mean, the thing about Yurt seven, and so let's go through his timeline. Let's not make it pressure filled. I'm just mm-hmm. saying the last couple of years, the addition the heat needed was right in the house healing. Right. I don't think people should forget about the fact that from the summer work, I know in summer league, he didn't play as much as he did last year. Um, but year at seven into camp, my gut, and we didn't get to know because the left ankle didn't didn't work. My gut is that cat was going to be in the first five. Really? Really? Okay. Because they did that's do that the first, the first preseason game. They, that's what they rolled out. And I was, I I was mean, kind of surprised by it. Yeah, well, the thing is, he's earned it, right? He did the work. Um, he is. He worked on his perimeter game, so he can kind of get out of Bam's way. And now, now that this little bottom of the circle jumper is a layup, I told Bam the other day, I don't even want to see layups from you because that is a layup, right? You dunk and you shoot that little thing, right. whatever you'll call it. You guys can put a name on that thing yet? You put a name on. Uh, that little I don't know. It's just the inside the foul line. Everybody knows where it is, and he always seems yeah. open. Like I, I don't, I haven't I figured it. out why. Hey man, this is a spot. I, I might call it eyeball. That's what you shoot the eyeball out with. That thing. Eyeball. He's a, <laughs> yeah. He's but, also. Uh, I think Leroy. That while we all get, you know, uh, into our fantasy world of what possibly could occur, mm-hmm. um, I would love to see what happens when, middle February, early March, mm-hmm. when you have the big fella out of Georgetown. If it's anything, if it's anything like the patience they had with Vic and what they're getting out of Vic, oh my mm. goodness. <laughs> that mm. means the Heat know something we don't because they ain't saying nothing. Yeah. But uh, Vic has been... It'd just be interesting to see how you work him in when you get him back. Right. Uh, because, you know, the, the listen, Wes Brown and the medical staff, training staff, they're, they're going to be methodical. Right, mm-hmm. they're they're gonna yes. explore the we that are that are appetite, which is good for the player, as we've noticed. But th- this is the and only then, organization, uh, Jacks, that I've seen do that. I've seen so many players in so many other sports be rushed back, and then when they can't play, just get dumped. And the fact that they had so much patience with Vic, um, and they do it with a lot of guys with their injuries. Uh, kudos to yeah. them, man. They're very patient with that stuff. Jax, yeah. uh, before um, before we get you out of here, getting back to Bam. Not in the top ten of fan all star voting, which uh, is an incredible disgrace. Um, Listen, it's our fault, by the way. Oh, Tobin, trust like, me, it, I know it's Heat it, Nation. I, I'm not wagging my finger at you, but do it. there's more than there's there's more than enough of us to get that man a million votes, two there's, million votes. There's mm-hmm. no way we go to every city, and when the when the winds start happening, you hear those chants. You saw how D Wade was received nationally on his last dance. Like I'm stunned that he didn't like, he's not out drawing Claxton or Kuzma. Those guys are nice players, but this guy, he's elite Jax and he's, and is taking even more of a step. So just for him, he's not a guy who likes to complain a lot about like the, the lack of respect that he gets or the lack of recognition that he gets, but do you, but he's not, he's also not a guy who forgets. He also takes note of that stuff. How do you feel like that is fueling this kind of run that he's on? This season's just been really impressive from him. Yeah, well, I hope uh, – yeah, I think some of it, right? Like, And then the, part of it is, you know, fans are just have to vote now. So he can wait and see what the, the media vote and the player vote, see if it pulls up. The coaches are definitely going to have him in the mix. So right. there's that. So he doesn't have to really, really worry about it. Um you know, first and the fifteenth probably take care of a lot of things <laughs> in that man's soul. Um, I, I just think that he knows that he can be elite. He knows that he is now the culture carrier. That 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 torch yeah. is making his hand hot because uh, we're halfway through Udonis's last season, and I wouldn't be surprised if the next captain of this team is 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 Bam. Uh, it, if not singularly. 
you know, among, you know, uh, him and a couple guys. Um, so I think he's just really focused on elevating his game. His defense is elite. Like, let's not even kid ourselves on that front. Uh, and now he's moving into a space where you can only look at Giannis and Joker. Right. And the sense of what you can, what he can do in his totality. And Bam's not passing as much, but he sure can. <laughs> if yeah. it's needed, he can definitely do that. Well, we appreciate the time, Jax. Go check him out tonight. You guys can hear him, of course. WQAM, the Heat Audio Experience gets going for you. Solana gets going with preheat today at 645. Tommy Tig, Jason Jackson do the whole crew. And then, of course, you guys can watch Jason Jackson tonight. Bally mm-hmm. Sports Sun, a little pregame action, 730. Your coverage gets going. Doing a fantastic job. A man who's broadcasting all over the spectrum. Radio, television. He is the Jack Show. We appreciate it, Jax. Thanks so much for the time this morning. Thanks, Jax. I'm gonna get out of my I'm gonna get out of my work release program. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice curtains in a nice hotel in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. And I lit it well, by the way. That's for your beautiful stream. Okay. We appreciate we it. Appreciate You're a pro's it, pro. You're a pro's a pro's pro. Now let me go put some pants on. <laughs> Thanks again to Jax for joining the show. Thanks to all you for tuning in this week. We'll be back on Monday once again to react to all the shenanigans from the weekend. Stay safe, everybody. Hope you mother have a good day.